the YouTube. It's Brian Phillips. And what do we have here? We have this thing. It's huge and it's amazing. It's a D2230R. It's like it could be a scooter or something. <clears throat> it's definitely not a scooter. But I'm definitely super excited for this one. In fact, it's kind of killing me. I wanted to wait until my throat was not sounding like I was dying. Holy cow. What is this? It is a timber 2.0. And guys, it's not just two meters. It's balsa wood. Yep. So seriously, if you guys are brand new to the hobby and you don't know what timbers are, get ready to live. I'm sure some of you are probably thinking, oh, and that's Turbo Timber SWS two meter. Okay, that yellow plane is two meters. Mm -hmm. And it's huge. It is. And that's the way we like them, it's huge, right? Right. Oh yeah, oh yes. Strong and stiff. Yet lightweight and long lasting. So here goes nothing. We're just gonna try yeah. to pull this thing out. I gotta say, this is a heavy package. And yeah. also, I'm gonna talk about the elephant in the room, and I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the fact that this is expensive, okay? It is a balsa wood plane. It is not a foamy, guys. Balsa wood is expensive, and it's a lot more expensive to manufacture balsa wood planes these days than it used to be. So just keep that in mind as you see this. I mean, we would tell you to look at Allie, but uh, for the size oh comparison, goodness. he's about the size of small children. So anyway, all right, Allie, hopefully you didn't see that. This is gonna be awesome, and we're getting into it right now. Turbo Timber SWS, which stands for like Sport, Sport Wood, wood series. series. You may have heard of this before. What's included in the box? 4S to 6S compatible motor with 100 amp smart BSC bind and fly basic version only. Obviously this thing has all the stuff that we've come to expect in the foamies. They're calling it a skill level two. I'm assuming that's probably about right. Camera crew's gonna help. <clears throat> She's gonna help me just lift on your end. Okay, so this is gonna be packaged slightly different than what we're used to with foamies. Mm -hmm. As you can already see, okay. And this will be available as an ARF. Yes, also. you can get it as an ARF, but just keep in mind, guys, it's way better value if you get this as a bind and fly. Yeah. Because you're literally getting like hundreds of dollars off the price. And yeah, that's even at the expensive price it is. This is a big plane, yep. guys. It's it's a big plane. Even, even a big plane that's foam is a lot cheaper than this. And that's just the way it is. Wood planes are more expensive and they're worth it. So if you guys want to have the best of the best, this is where you wanna be. So anyway, we've got a manual here, Turbo Timber SWS 2.0, okay? This is the E-Flight, one of their amazing manuals. So we'll slide this out real quick. Okay, so that's always good to have. We will walk through it. If there's questions, and there may be questions that I'm not used to, just it's packed different. It's a different plane, it's new. Now, it is a timber still, and I know some of, that's the other thing I want to address. Some of you are gonna say another timber. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm gonna disagree with you on this one because I love big planes. And if they wanna make all the awesome planes that we like and they wanna make them bigger, like a Concendo or you know whatever it happens to be, <laughs> I love the Concendo, it's one of my favorites. I keep having dreams of having a big Carbon Z Concendo, okay? Well, if you're listening, Horizon, yes please. So here's the package, okay, that comes in the side there. There's gonna be a little bit more assembly than on some foamies. I'm just gonna try to separate the tape. Uh, okay, we'll come back to that. Motor, prop, spinner. Looks like some decals or something, I'm not sure. Oh no, it's a scoop. And then a couple of screws for the wings. All right, now that I've got that out, I can take out the wing. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm just trying to do this carefully because this is a big plane. It's expensive and I want it to be in good shape because I really enjoy balsa wood planes. But in my experience, balsa wood planes have usually come with, you know, they're about the same size as what we're used to. This is actually big and balsa. And we don't have a lot of big balsa wood planes. Yes, they have protected the control arms, which is nice. 
the flaps are hinged down. Just notice that, see that? Finger hinges, fully assembled by the way, I might add. And that's one of the things that I like about this model is that they are supposed to be, you know, fully assembled or at least assembled in, in the, you know, bind and fly style. So let's slide this out of the bag. That is a big wing. That is a big wing and I'm very happy about that. So if you guys haven't experienced the Turbo Timber 1.5, then you may not understand what you're missing, but it is a great plane. Now, is it the best plane that's ever existed? No, but it's one of my favorites and it's a great place to start. If you're coming back to the hobby and you want balsa wood and you don't mind spending a little bit of a premium, this might be the place for you now. But I'm gonna just tell you this, look at this. Look how beautiful that is. Wow. That is gorgeous. Okay, listen. Oh yeah, that feels so strong. Oh yeah, LEDs. Awesome, I did not know we were getting LEDs on this. So that is pretty sweet. Obviously we have an LED wire here and then we have twin connectors that are gonna take you out to your flaps and ailerons. Now keep in mind, you saw it just like I did. Those wires have to be terminated, okay? That's both good and bad. I see that as a good thing because that means that you should be able to split these out and set up crow or full length flaps, but you're not gonna be able to do a full length aileron because this aileron would only go down. You could set up differential if you wanna do that, okay? So if you do a full length flap, then you're gonna be going down and down and this would be a full length flapper on, okay? Or you could do a full length aileron and set up negative differential on this aileron surface. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just trust me, it's how you would do it. And we'll show you the full radio setup like we always do on all the planes. Obviously, when we're dealing with a more advanced plane, we're maybe not gonna get into as much nitty gritty. So if you're brand new to the hobby, this would probably not be, in my opinion, the best choice. Get the 1.5, see if you love it, and you will. And then this would be a good one to jump up to at some point. And I think that's one other thing to keep in mind is like, you gotta remember there's always gonna be, I know some of you are probably thinking, but this is the new release. I really wanted this, that, or the other thing. Well, there's like 24 some odd new releases that they release on like a normal on year, year at Horizon. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, I mean, there's gonna be some that you're not into, but there's other people that are into. This is gonna be one of the, gosh, we only, I felt like we only got like two or three new balsa wood planes, but from E-Fly, it's really uncommon right. to get a balsa wood bind and fly plane. Usually balsa wood planes are gonna be in the, we've got the tread pattern in there, mm -hmm. nice big squishy tires. Um, pneumatic tires would be nice. We'll see about that at some point in the future maybe. If something becomes available, we'll jump into it and share it. But just so you guys know, the landing gear are very basic on this. Now, some of you are probably thinking, but I like the, the splaying landing gear on the 1.5. I don't blame you, I do too. But the thing is you get bigger like this and it actually, you know, you can get away with doing an aluminum bracket like this and it's oh, gonna okay. give you good strength. So I'm not sure whether I'm excited about that or if I'm a little disappointed because I really like that splaying landing gear. So again, maybe in the future there'll be something they offer I know back when people were having excitement over the Carbon Z Cub, some people made some really awesome landing gear for that. Do you remember that? I don't. It was right when we started. Yeah, it was a long time ago. Oh man, there's like an empty, okay. There you go. It's actually not a box. No. Nope. It's just, it's like a piece of cardboard that's folded. So guys, we are super thrilled and excited to be bringing this to you here on Brian Phillips RC. If you're brand new to the channel or if this is maybe the first video you're seeing in a while, what we do here is we help people avoid being a statistic, a one and done. We help people getting back into the hobby. This one, you've, it's exactly the same as the other one, so we'll just actually lay this out. Obviously, we're gonna build the plane, but this is the unbox part. Um, we do unbox build radio setup. At the beginning of our experience with the plane, now on this one, we're gonna set it up with regular inboard flaps. And then later, we'll probably go ahead and do crow is what I would like to do on this model. 
But if you guys are brand new to the channel and you don't know what we do, that's what we do. We try to help get you guys up to speed so you can make good purchasing decisions with your limited RC budget. And then, you know, maybe you're gonna just rule this thing out right away because it's so expensive. Or maybe you're gonna say, hey, you know, I really like the idea of this plane, but I don't necessarily want to spend that much money. So is a 1.5 gonna do it for me? Probably. Goodness gracious. There's a lot of tape. This packaging is kind of annoying, I gotta say. The bag packaging is usually like more. Of a I always have annoyance, annoyances with this, but this is more consistent with a wood model. Yeah. It's just, I have absolutely no problem with foam packing. I like it, I want to see more of it because it works. And we almost never have damage to planes. Although, one of the extremely rare occasions that I had damage from an E-Flight product was on my 1.5 meter turbo, not turbo timber, my regular timber. Mm. Do you remember that? Yeah. There was like some random thing that got damaged. Really tight finish on everything. And you guys might notice this has the same livery as, so you may have noticed it has the same livery as the 1.5 turbo timber, okay? So that's obviously going to be good if you like it. Look at this, super stiff and strong. This is a big horizontal stabilizer. Yeah, it is. And it's a big control surface, folks. So obviously we have to take these little things off. These are just protecting the plane from itself, which is very important. <sighs> okay. Now, this thing completely bolts together as we've been told. So that's pretty exciting. That means no glue to deal with. That's kind of uggo. I wish that color was white. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be white. It's just a little bit off colored. But here's the thing, guys. I'm just gonna say it like, like it is. These balsa wood planes are better planes than foam. Foam is, has been the great equalizer. It has given us planes that we could never have in balsa because it gets us into a different media so we can make a more detailed plane on a lower budget that people want, okay? But you have some trade-offs that come with balsa, or excuse me, with, uh, <clears throat> with, foam. with foam. Yeah. And so one of the biggest trade-offs is cost. So not everybody is gonna wanna spend this kind of money. And so we fully recognize that if you guys are like, hey, you know, I would love to do that, but it's just too much money for my RC budget, we get it. Okay, here's the thing. Carbon Z Cub, Carbon Z T28, which is one of my favorites, are both very big and ex they're amazing flight experiences. That plastic bag was damaging the tip of this a little bit. Mm. That's not cool. I don't think it's gonna be that noticeable. But that's one of the things we point out on this channel is we show where we see damage when we unbox these planes, but that's not really what we're after. We're after showing whether or not the plane does what the manufacturers claim they will. And I, I'm super excited for this plane because having a big and beautiful two meter plane makes me very excited. But then to have one that's also balsa wood is even more exciting to me. Because to be honest with you, I would love to have more balsa wood planes, but the truth is there's just not a lot of them that hit our budget point. And also we think that a lot of you are after basically flying foamies because foamies meet your lifestyle a little bit more. Because most people don't have the time to put together ARFs. They certainly don't have the budget to put together ARFs. And those are two major drawbacks to going with balsa. And so they have answered all those things with the bind and fly package helping to hold down the cost and the fact that you're getting a really big plane that's ready to rock and roll right out of the box. Oh, I'm trying to decide the best. Goodness gracious, this packaging is driving me nuts. I just wanna take it out, but it's like you gotta cut everything free and you gotta be careful. And if there's one thing that I'm good at doing, it's being careful with my airplanes, <laughs> okay? So we've got the cowl. Ooh, there's lights on it too, sweet. Okay, how do I know there's lights? Because there's a wire. Okay, looks absolutely fantastic, very light. And look, they're actually glued in, which is nice. This is fiberglass, it's very well built. I can definitely tell. We don't have to do anything with the LEDs, they're just ready to rock and roll. 
which is awesome, and I'm super pleased to report that. There's also down here at the bottom of the box, for fear of damaging something, I'm not gonna tip the box. We have a carbon fiber tube, which is gigantic. Um, hold on. This thing doesn't wanna rip out very easy. Goodness gracious. Like I said, not a big fan of the packaging so far, but also pretty much standard operating procedure for ARFs. If you guys have ever done ARFs, they're pretty much like always packed this way. Or worse. Oh, that's not carbon fiber. What is that? That's metal. That's straight up metal. Wow. That is a big tube. It is a big tube. So this is gonna be the wing joiner. And then uh, what do we have here? We have a prop, it's wooden prop, it looks beautiful. Let's go ahead and cut this thing up, see what it looks like. Okay. That's a 15.8. This looks gorgeous. I love wood props. I know I do too until I hit them on the concrete and then yeah. I destroy them, which I do like to do because prop strikes will definitely ruin a prop like that in a hurry. Okay, so now the fuse is in here and I am trying to think of the best way to do this because as you can see the way it's packed, not sure the best way to do this. I think I'm gonna cut the end of the box on the corner so I can carefully pop it out. Why don't we just cut this side and then it'll be easier for you to see what I'm doing. Okay. I was gonna cut both ends down there, but I'll just do this instead. Now keep in mind guys, we have unboxed, built, and radio set up literally hundreds of planes, helicopters, VTOLs, that sort of thing. And we love doing it for you here on Brian Phillips RC. What you can do in exchange if you wanna give us a pat on the back would be to buy these planes when and if you decide to do it. We never expect you to buy the exact particular plane that we're reviewing. I have to cut all four corners, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Um, but we do understand there's gonna be a time when, you know, say, you're not into the particular plane or it's out of your budget or it's, you're not in a balsa or maybe you don't do gassers or something like that. We're doing a gasser, which we haven't done yet, but note to self, we should do that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we want to help give you guys an idea of what's in the market too. Mm -hmm. And so occasionally we're going to do planes that maybe we wouldn't even do on a routine basis. But I love this plane. I am dying to get it in the air. Okay, so I don't know if this whole thing needs to come off or if there's possibly some things in it. So I'm just gonna put this on the edge of the table counter in our case and fold it down. Oh, okay, so this end is not glued. What the heck? Oh, it's that taped. taped on that end. So after you guys have watched me unbox this, you should have a lot easier time, okay? So just foam, Looks nothing, like a new nothing wrong with holder. that. And then foam, okay? Nothing wrong with that, really well packed actually. And then look, you can use that as a plane stand. But oh my goodness, look at that monster. Look at that wow. monster right there. Oh, that works pretty yes. good, actually. That does work pretty good. It actually kind of hugs it. Yeah. Okay, so what I was gonna do is just show you the motor and everything first. Because first of all, glass cockpit, glass canopy, so beautiful, okay? Huge motor. It's, it's 50, 55. 500 kV, that is huge motor. Probably one of the biggest motors we've ever had. Careful. I know this would probably slide out the end, but I just want to show you how nice the finish is on this. And I think that canopy is glued down. Okay. So I'm just doing this. I'm trying to do this careful. I'm super excited. Oh, and by the way, there's another thing in there. The AR8360T, okay? So what does that mean? That means AS3X, that means safe if you want it. And to be honest with you, if you're flying in safe on this model, I don't want you to feel like that's a problem because there really is no problem. If you need safe, use safe. Who cares what anybody thinks? But the truth is, when you've got a model of this echelon, you would think that the average person that's flying this type of model would probably not be in safe. However, if you're just getting back to the hobby, you want to get yourself in the best possible circumstance to have success. There is nothing wrong with using an auto leveling device, which is safe, sensor aided or sensor assisted flight envelope rather. And in tune with AS3X, 
which is what Safe runs on top of, okay? AS3X is a stabilizer that's gonna help to, you know, counter environmental impact. Now, bigger airplanes like this may not be as reliant on a stabilizer to have good flight performance, just general flight performance, but we're still gonna show you how to set all that stuff up. And the beauty of it is looking at this, you also have telemetry data that gets sent back to your transmitter and it's all pre-wired it looks like, so it should be a pretty easy thing. Now, I just wanna point out the fact that there are Y cables here, okay, for the ailerons and the flaps, okay? Not a big deal to just swap those out for a straight cable and then everything else, if you just wanna give them a quick shot in there, everything looks very clean and it's gonna be easy to work. This should not be a super hard build, but it's gonna take a few more minutes to build than your average non, you know, balsa wood plane, okay? So our foamies are gonna be a little bit quicker in most cases. And then here, now that we're done kind of opening the package, what I wanna do is I wanna slide this out of the way and just start showing you some of the smaller bags that we just kind of blew through really quick, okay? So as you can see, we've got our motor mount adapter. So that's gonna take the motor. Holy cow, that's the adapters for the wheels. That's pretty sweet for the landing gear. There's some collars here. Don't lose your set screws. A few screws, lock nut, regular nut. Wait, two lock nuts. So those definitely go with the landing gear. These probably go, I don't know where they go, but there's three collars, four collars. So it's probably for the landing gear as well. So this must all be kind of the, that's not very many pieces guys for a model this size. Mm -hmm. And then this obviously goes up here to adapt the motor on. Now, when you're metal on metal, you should be fine using Loctite. And of course, we're gonna look at what the instruction manual suggests. But if you wanna use Loctite on that, you're fine. However, just be careful. Remember, you're not dealing with a foamy here, okay? If you get Loctite on your plastic, it will potentially damage the plastic, okay? Linkages for the elevator and rudder, okay? And then the wheel fairings, or wheel pants. These are fairings, yeah. And then some the Velcro straps for the battery, which in my case, I usually end up using whatever I've got lying around that, that came out of a crash plane or whatever. If they have a strap like this, I can tolerate it, but these ones, they're just a waste of my time. So I'll probably just leave those sitting there and we'll come back to that after a bit. These are the fairings for the wheels, so that must be, okay. And then there's uh, Velcro that's gonna hold the battery in if you decide to do it that way. We'll use shelf liner. And then this is a scoop for something. I don't know where it goes, but we'll find out. And then look, we have two more pieces here. These are the wing adapters, screws. And then these go on to the elevator and rudder, okay. So these actually go with the linkages, which are here, okay? So we'll cut those out. So guys, piece count on a big model, a big and relatively expensive model is very low. I would say the piece count is low. Heavy duty apparatus for each and every one of the important critical devices we've seen so far. Let's check out the spinner and see if it's any good. If you guys have questions, leave them in the comments below. We try our best to keep up with comments, but we do get behind admittedly. If you're one of our Patreons, we want to say a special thanks to you and also remind you guys if you'd like to become a Patreon, there's a good possibility it's going to give you access to us for comments a little bit easier, but it is not a defined benefit because then we'd have to charge that to those that are overseas, which is ridiculous. Okay, heavy duty spinner. Everything looks good there. I'm going to cut these screws and put them next to the spinner. Okay. So guys, if you haven't noticed, there's not a lot of pieces for a very big model here. And I am super excited to be involved with this and be able to share this. Whatever this stuff is, if you could come around and, yeah, every time you step on there, I think you've, I've dropped something. So maybe, maybe avoid standing on that car, cardboard. Okay, so I don't know what this is, but this might be reinforcements. Oh, by the way, if you decide to do floats on this plane, the floats are going to be the same floats that you use for the Carbon Z Cub. And yes, they are foam, but it is a float. So it's gonna be complementary in colors and it's gonna look nice 
but the thing is they're obviously sold separate and they're big and they're relatively expensive. I think they're like, I know they're well over a hundred bucks, but the thing is if you're gonna be doing float plying, which by the way, we will be at some point because we have a pond that's getting dug right now. I mean, not right this second because we've got snow on the ground. We are super excited to share the progress, but obviously we're in a holding pattern for the rest of the winter because you can't build a dam properly in the middle of winter because you can't, you can't do the lifts um, every time they need to go and pack that dirt. So if you guys are watching this and we've already finished our pond and other videos and you're coming back to watch this, we want you guys to say we're jealous of you because we want to see what the pond looks like. By the way, E-Flight, thank you for giving us another big plane. I am kind of dying to get this thing in the air. And I'm sure that you guys will be super excited to see how this thing turns out. But I just want to tell you, everything about it so far feels stiff. I'm a little bit bummed I like leading edge slats and I don't see any sort of leading edge slat. And that was something I always appreciated on the other timbers. So I guess we're not gonna have leading edge slats on this and that's fine and I'll get used to it. But the truth is when you buy and build or build a balsa wood plane, there is a good chance you're gonna be in the realm of making modifications, okay? Now also, if you buy this as a plug and fly, you're gonna be including or not including all of the components, okay? So just remember, when you're ready to start throwing money at this, if you're considering the plug and play versus the bind and fly, just keep in mind, add everything up, you'll find that it's hundreds of dollars of savings and you're gonna get high quality spectrum components. So I would suggest you consider the bind and fly. That's what we almost always suggest, okay? So we're gonna take a minute, clean up and come right back. All right, so we got everything cleaned up and now that I have everything spread out, I learned a couple of different things. First of all, I jumped into the manual just to review things and I noticed that they had some inserts. This is strange because it's in all the different languages. They must have missed a page, okay? But not English. Because the English, I actually did the Google Translate and I looked at this and it says the same stuff as the English version. So if you're not reading the other versions, then you should be able to just uh, set it aside, okay? Now, second thing I learned is that this bag of goodies, which is basically only gonna be used for float applications, so we're obviously gonna hold that aside and we're gonna have it available for when we do floats, which should come after the pond is done, okay? So with that, set that aside. Now, this is an optional, potentially unnecessary vent that's gonna be used in applications where you need additional cooling, okay? So that has to be cut in, it's quite a thing. They go into the details, but it's mostly designed for people that are gonna be in hotter environments, like in a desert flying environment to allow for some additional cooling, okay? So we're gonna lay that aside as well. Obviously we wanna keep those, retain them just in case we need them. Earlier I had the plane on this and it actually worked pretty good, but I figure by the time we're done, we're gonna want it on a plane stand like usual. This echelon of plane is probably going to be received by pilots that have a plane stand. But this did work pretty good. So if you decided to build it on there, no big deal. Also, we went ahead and got the 1.5 meter just so you could see the difference in size and look, okay? It's a very similar look as you can tell from the livery, okay? But it's not the same plane, obviously, this is foam and this is wood, okay? This is bigger and that is smaller. This is way more expensive and this is way cheaper. Both are great experiences and you might not want the wood experience because it's a little bit too expensive, but you do want the wood experience because it's a bigger plane and it's gonna be a better flying plane and it's gonna retain its look and feel longer because as you guys may have learned when dealing with foamies, they get dinged and they get dented easily. And even though we have hundreds of them, it's really a lot easier to keep these clean and looking brand new. There's a reason they're more expensive. 
And it's not because they're cleaner and <laughs> it's newer looking, it's because they're more expensive to build. Okay, so now that we have established those things, we're gonna go ahead and start building. Now the instructions start in some random spot in my opinion. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you, they want you to start with the tail section. I am not starting with the tail section. Okay, we'll come back to the tail section. Why? <clears throat> because I feel like this plane makes better sense to build landing gear first. Oh. I have reasons for that, okay? So I'm gonna do that. If you choose to do it your own way, that's fine. If you wanna do it exactly as the manual says, that's also fine, okay? There are areas that have to be cut in if you're gonna install floats, and it's back here. They are not cut in now. This needs to come off for the landing gear to be installed. We're going to assemble the landing gear and then install them. Also, you'll notice that I sorted all the hardware. There's not very much of it, mm -hmm. okay? So just peeling this off. Oh, and by the way, if you guys were wondering, a lot of times when we're doing new releases, we have quality assurance samples. And this one is a regular production sample. So what you see here is what it's gonna come to you like, okay? So that may not always be true, and we try to identify that to you. Like for instance, SR71, that was a quality sample. Concendo Evo, or the Concendo UMX, quality sample, okay? They don't always come as quality samples, but a lot of times they do. Just depends on how the inventory levels are and what the timing is, okay? So this thing comes out, okay? So this is going to be the plug that allows you to get this all installed. I'm gonna leave this right here, and we're just gonna to refer to the instructions, okay? Now, understanding that I have to come back to this is not a big deal, but also you're gonna note that some of the instructions are gonna actually point out how to install servos. You probably don't need to install servos. If you're getting this as a bind and fly, obviously that's going to be true, okay? but I did take some time and just verify where all my hardware was supposed to be paired up, okay? And so it's pretty simple stuff. It looks like it's gonna be a pretty easy build. And so if you guys are planning on building this at the flying field before you go flying for the first time, you know, you might wanna plan on a little bit of time for that. But it's definitely gonna take a little longer than your average foamy, okay? So without further ado, we're gonna start. Landing gear wheels. Pretty straightforward, basic stuff. They're gonna slide onto this shaft. I did, full disclosure, insert this grub screw or set screw into there. Okay, there is a flat machined here. It looks like a giant air filler, okay? It does. So this is ultimately gonna go on there, but for now, <clears throat> we'll leave that off and we'll just slide it through the frame and then we'll put the nylock on. Pretty basic stuff. Now these fairings are actually glued on. I think I said no glue earlier. Well, evidently I was wrong because these do glue on or you can leave them off. It's just up to you. Technically, the parts that are glued are optional, okay? So you may need to have two sizable wrenches if you're using this to install because as you can see, it's really hard for me to turn that since it's a nylock, okay? So I'm gonna get these both started and then I'm probably gonna end up getting a second uh, sizable wrench and we'll be right back. So we've got a second sizable wrench. Obviously I'm gonna hold this and then I'm gonna spin, but I don't wanna damage the paint. So I'll probably end up actually spinning the nut, which is sort of the opposite way I would normally do this or the opposite way that I would normally do it because I don't wanna scrape the paint. I'm gonna start over here on the inside now, admittedly, if you did scrape the paint, you're gonna be hidden by the tire. So you might decide to do this opposite of what I'm doing, but it's pretty easy stuff. And this would be in a typical field service kit, in my opinion. Most people have a box with some tools. If you're going to a flying field on a routine basis, you probably have all those goodies with you. And if you don't, you'll probably collect them over time. Crescent wrenches are not something that I use all the time especially not two of them. I usually only need one because I'm usually tightening a knot that bites onto the prop, okay? So we're gonna tighten both of these real quick. 
I'll try the other direction this time and see if there's, no, I think I had it right the first time. Now, if you guys are wanting to have a build that's a little easier, like I said, um, obviously if you're getting a foamy, you're gonna have the easiest build for most planes. But in this case, this is still a pretty dang easy build, given that it's going to give you a very good outcome. And I just wanna point out the fact that if you get this as an ARF, you're gonna spend considerably more time putting this together. Felt like I was cross-threading, but I'm not. It's just a nylock and it's uh, pretty tight. So if you guys aren't used to seeing nylocks in RC aviation, I would say it's a little bit unusual and they used a, a jam nut, which is also unusual. That's why it's so thin. I like that it's a jam nut because it's thin, which means there's less wasted material. Um, and I like that it's an iLock because it gives us a little bit higher probability of success in that they won't loosen, given that we have a spinning shaft here. Okay, I'm just being more careful because I don't want to scratch the finish. Okay, should get us started. And just to give you guys an idea of how much I did or didn't scratch, that wasn't too bad, but a washer would alleviate all risk of scratching. So then we need to set these little collars, spacers, okay? So they're gonna go in here and then they're gonna get tightened down. I'm assuming that is a 1.5 millimeter. Yeah, 1.5 millimeter. And these are gonna get tightened down. If you wanna just double check the instructions, say to do it this way. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna torque that down. And there's one on the inside of each side and just pretty basic i made a small gap there i don't really know why i did a gap probably should just push it in tight I'm not really sure why we have a grub screw to set this because really this could be washers and it would probably be more effective so we'll just slide this on here and as you can see you're going to want the flat out here and so you'll notice that i picked the angle that I picked so that they'll mimic each other in case I have to work on these later on. Okay, you can see why we'll I have it mostly tight. I'm gonna go, meaning I push this into the face of the landing gear wheel. And I'm just gonna hold this until it bites. And then I wanna make it flush with my finger. Now, if you guys ever have one of these and it likes to, feels like it's gonna strip, I'm gonna tell you what, these little tools, flight test made a few, and I have had amazing luck. If I ever have one strip, they must have paid like primo dollars for those things because I have a bunch of different sizes at 1.5, and those ones are the ones that, if I ever have one slip, I'll jump down and use that one. Of course, I don't have it in my normal kit because that would be too easy. Okay, so as you can see, this is not a super hard process. But just keep in mind, if you are going to mount the fairings on here, then they're showing doing a bunch of things like using clips, and that's like way too much work for me. Um, also, I want to point out the fact that this has the flat on it. So I'm going to take the flat, which is currently pointed down, and I'm just going to grab the flat, and I'm going to twist it if it'll let me. Yep, and now I've got that in a similar orientation to my other. Should make it a little easier. So again, full disclosure, I had to put those grub screws in. And as you can see, I just got them a couple of threads deep. Pretty basic assembly here, okay? So the camera crew is gonna do her best to get you guys a shot of all the steps. But I think so far, if you're building this plane and you need help on this step, you're probably in bigger trouble, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, so, and also just doing this step makes me think of all the planes that I love, <clears throat> the Carbon Z Cub is one of my favorites, but we had a heck of a time with the hardware on that. Mm -hmm. And so I would say this is a welcome set yeah, of landing gear. so far. Very, very easy to work with. Now, some of you may be inclined to not 
not install the fairings, okay? Now, I will tell you this. My expectation of the fairings, the wheel fairings, is that once installed, they're gonna be fine because they're going to tend to, to stiffen this, even if it's minor. When these get splayed out, my guess is we're gonna bend mostly at the joint and not so much in the boom. But there will be a certain amount that will bend in the boom. So if you have a rough landing, there is a high probability this plywood, yeah, that's plywood. Eh, it might be balsa, so it's kind of hard to tell. It's probably gonna pop off, okay? So just be prepared for that. Now, the instructions, they say to actually put, they say to put thread locker on this, okay? So over here, we have these bolts. One, two, three, and then there's three washers and three lock nuts, okay? Or not lock nuts, but lock washers rather. Okay, so the camera crew is gonna move this down just a little bit so we don't lose the view, but we lose the glare. Okay, so this is some Loctite. This is probably not the exact stuff they call for, but I don't care because it's metal on metal and it's going into here and it's gonna be fine. It's probably better than nothing. I am a little bit disappointed to see that we have ply and ply between this assembly. I'd like to see metal on metal on metal but what are you gonna do? It's not a big deal. So, bolt, washer, lock washer, and then washer, okay? So you made the same exact assembly, very basic stuff. Now this does go back in, okay? And as you can see, it kind of shoots down a little bit. So I'm not sure if we're supposed to pop that off because it looks like that's too thick now. It's almost as though that's not supposed to stay on there. That bottom piece is a well, Yeah, did I miss that here? That does look like it would pop off. Because it looks like it's gonna shrink down. It's gonna squish down. But in looking at that, it doesn't mention it at all. But I guarantee you, ours is thicker. And that's also very ugly. So yes, it does pop off. Okay, so we'll need to keep that probably for if we do floats, okay? That you're so, gonna say forever. <laughs> yeah, so forever. So I'm gonna put this aside. Also, you may have noticed I put my stylish gloves on. These are nitro gloves. I work with my hands for a living. If you didn't already know that, I work as an industrial skill technician. And so I end up using gloves a lot because I handle and work with many weird things. Weird. Weird. Yes. But I don't like getting Loctite on my fingers. It makes my fingers slick. It drives me nuts. So I'm gonna use a paper towel so that I can soak up excess. I just, I don't like the feel of the stuff on my fingers. Call me weird because I am. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna lay this back down. Also, there's probably like lots of unknown carcinogens. Okay, so we've got some Loctite on there. In a perfect world, you would let that completely dry before you stick this in the hole. Uh, but I have never done that in my life. And so we are in an imperfect world. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do one, two, and three. Hey, these remind me a lot of the carbon cub screws, except that they work. Oh, good. Geez, the magnet's strong on these. No kidding. Like wanting to pull right out of the hole before the job's done. That's inappropriate. That's very good. Okay, so I'm gonna just, I'm not tightening it. So same thing here, very basic setup, guys. This is simple stuff. Obviously the lock washer goes on first, then the washer, okay? Because you don't wanna bite. And then of course, a little bit of Loctite. Don't forget to shake this if it's been used once or twice, okay? I'm actually gonna grab a bigger Phillips this time, so. If you guys are brand new to Brian Phillips RC, this is what we do. We unbox planes, we build them, we talk about the pros and cons, and then you guys get to make your mind up if you think it's awesome. Of course, usually I'm fawning over each aircraft, no matter how terrible it is. I love airplanes, and we have done so many of them that I really do have kind of widened my horizons from when I started flying radio-controlled airplanes. 
So if you're brand new to the channel, you probably don't realize that we have almost nine years of doing this. That's right, nine years of building airplanes. We have over nine years now, or something like yeah. that, which is pretty exciting because I love doing this and we love that you guys have supported us so much over the years, so we really appreciate it. I also want to apologize for my voice being so terrible. I've got the thing that everybody else has and it's just taken my voice forever to get back to normal. So my wife has made me some warm tea in my Rami RC cup. Oh yeah. In case you guys don't know who Rami is. Rami runs a YouTube channel and I have some cold water. That seems counterintuitive. But it seems to help a little bit. Right. So I'm gonna do it. Okay. Um, Rami has a, a really dinky YouTube channel that's like 15 times bigger than ours. And Rami helped me get started in that he introduced me to my first affiliate, which is pretty cool. So thanks, Rami. I'll never forget that. And that is really cool because mm -hmm. that helped, just like many of you guys have been with us for a long time, and it's really exciting to just have history with people. Okay, so now looking at the landing gear, they look nice, they look basic, they spin free, which is something I like. If you wanna have this thing tip over and nose over, all you gotta do is just tighten those really tight so that they bind but I don't know why you would want to do that. Okay, so now I can shed the gloves again because that was just to stop the Loctite. Nitro gloves are great for flying in the cold. And if you buy good nitro gloves, you can use them time and time again. Now, while we're between steps for just a quick second, we're gonna talk about batteries. Gen two or gen one, doesn't matter which gen. Of course, gen one is going to have a balance lead. These are smart batteries. Okay, you're gonna have an IC5, which is gonna be compatible with what's installed there. Now let's go ahead and plug this in and charge them. So I like the S2200. If you don't already have one, you might wanna think about it. You can slide it up or down to get either an IC3 or an IC5. And then Gen 2 charging is so beautiful because you set everything, you plug it in and it goes to town, okay? Now this one has a little bit more life on it. You also notice it's 30C instead of 50. This is a 50C pack. I don't believe it calls out a C rating in the manual and I suggest it probably won't matter. Plug it in, it starts the charge sequence. Very exciting. Now, that is a huge battery for a battery in a plane this size, but 7006S is probably where it's gonna be at for this plane, to be honest, it's a big plane, okay? All right, so continuing on with our build, we have to at some point decide if we're gonna put fairings on. I would like to have the fairings on and I think it's gonna be very easy. However, we work with Chinese a lot and so what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna go ahead and pay homage to the Chinese by using a UK-based Chinese glue. Okay. okay. You like how I laid that out? That was great. So if you guys don't know what China glue is, it is a... <clears throat> It is a, I believe it's a bark based glue. Oh, that yes. was magic. No, it's not. This is foam to foam. You can buy this while you're buying this model. If you do decide to buy any of these building materials, we appreciate it. Now you could use CA, just make sure you put it on the right way because I about mounted it the wrong way. I'm just gonna hold this in position and see which direction looks good. That is obviously wrong. That would be correct, okay? They seem to be ambidextrous. This is how hard this is, okay? I'm gonna put a slather, a schmear, if you will. Okay, now I'm gonna take a schmear and I'm just gonna spread it on here and I'm gonna put this on. And you're like, but Brian, the instruction manuals show using clamps. Okay, well, congratulations. This is Chinese glue, so I'm doing it the China way, okay? Schmear, schmear, lay, move on. You get you a chip clip. We could use chip clips, that would be appropriate. We are in our Okay, so now I'm gonna go schmear, just an even schmear. Mm -hmm. Now you could use CA if you like CA better. I don't care which one you use. I just like China glue because I don't have to worry about it drying out. And yes, please retain all the comments that you're planning on sending about using a fridge to keep your CA good. I used to do not it for happening. years. I have not had a good luck with it, but many of you have had great luck. So continue having great luck. I'm gonna continue using China glue where they call out CA. 
because I've had good luck with it. And we're going to keep keeping food in our fridge and not glue. We have currently two fridges in this house and four freezers, right? In addition to our freezers that come in our fridge. Yes. Yes. And that's because we have a family of six. So when you guys buy stuff from the links, you support our family. In case you were wondering. There's food okay? in our freezers. See this? Look at that. Amazing, right? You wow. can barely see it. Yep. That's why I like this stuff. Because now watch this. This is going to be amazing. Watch this. Boom. We're getting close. It's getting tacky. Okay? Tacky like Brian Phillips RC, your favorite RC host. <laughs> I haven't done the off-putting joke yet, but we'll get there. Okay. So we're going to have that set for just a minute or two. We may put a chip clip on there, but I just want to warn you. If you put a chip clip and it holds too tight, you're going to mar the finish because it's yeah. soft. Okay. So now they're talking about installing the... Yeah, see, and the motor mount bracket and all that good stuff, but in ours, because it's a bind and fly. Show them that page in the ARF. Yeah, we don't need to actually do any of that. Yep. I love when we can skip whole pages of directions. It makes me feel very good see, inside. See, look, they used a chip clip. I'm just kidding. Listen, that's not a chip clip, okay? So if you guys didn't know this, my wife is the camera crew. So yes, <laughs> you that's right. You didn't know that, I don't know. It's just, just like Hollywood, except we're married. Right. <laughs> did, did you like that? Okay. Oh, we aren't all supposed all to do jokes like that. This is an early release. What do we're married? That's, That's not a joke. See? There's oh. nothing funny about that. <laughs> There's nothing funny at all. <laughs> so guys, we've been married for many, many moons, and we love each other. <laughs> Why did that have air quotes? <laughs> because we're filming an RC <laughs> video, and I have a big backyard. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is on there. I just want you to show the people at home mm -hmm. how amazing that installation turned out. That is amazing. I just wanted to point out something. Sometimes these models claim bolt together, no glue, blah, 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 whatever. Except. I don't really care. It's not that big a deal, but it is nice to not have to glue in control horns and not to have to glue in hinges because I'm going to tell you something. There is one point on a model like this or like this rather where you can make a mistake as a newer pilot or a returning person that doesn't know how to use this amazing Chinese glue. This is actually, it's just called China glue generically. Yeah. But this is not Chinese glue, you guys. This is Chinese glue. China glue. It's in a white unmarked package yes. that I promptly marked with a marker. Or is it toothpaste or is it glue? Who's buying toothpaste in that small of a It's tube? glue. I know, I know. It was hard to figure out. If you take it out and it smells, well, I don't know. I don't know what that's like anymore. Yeah. If you guys didn't know this, I hit my head on the concrete really hard and had a brain injury last year. That's why I'm so weird. You're, well, no. Actually, no, it's not. You were weird before that. It's, <laughs> did you? What? I'm, I'm not weird like that. I just can't smell stuff anymore. Nope. No, you can smell stuff. Just now not, I have phantom smell. Just not the right stuff. Yeah. It's really annoying. Okay. So wear a helmet or something like that. Okay. So continuing on, as you can see, the fairings are installed. It works perfectly. Perfect. Now, now, they want a drop of thread lock on the motor mount. A you drop? Know, but Brian, you're going straight to the motor mount. You're darn tootin' I am. Okay. You want to know why? I already took my gloves off. So yes, one other really does put gloves on this often. I, I use gloves because I'm just used to it. Okay. We'll pause while I get my gloves on. Check this out guys. By the way, if you fly in cold nitro gloves really do help. So you'll Ser need, seriously. need those this weekend when it's like a high of five below. Listen, quit being so positive. I'm going to lay this out of the way. Okay. Then I'll put this down, and you're probably thinking to yourself, boy, if you had a tail wheel, like if you built the tail first, you would have no problems laying that down, except I don't want it to roll around. Booyah! I'm going to use this thing. Watch this. Oops. Now remember, I can't make any, like, moany noises or anything, because this is a new release. Okay. I See, I didn't. I'm being good today. Good job. Okay. See this? Four screws, one, two, three, four. Okay, those four screw holes 
they need to receive those four screws there. And then this thing is gonna go onto the prop, okay? So I obviously have to get this crap out of the way so that I can put it on there. And so in true Brian Phillips RC fashion, I have not prepared it ahead of time. Well, yeah, why would you do you that? Know, you know, there's a lot of people that do really nice job of like clipping their videos. So then you get the impression that it's like a five minute build. I mean, I spent probably 30 minutes just sorting all this crap for you. And we don't usually do that either. We don't do that usually either. So you're getting like the royal treatment tonight. Where are you putting thread lock? I'm putting thread lock in the hole where I was told to stick it. Oh, okay. Yes, which is, I'm sticking it on each of these screws, okay? These are the correct screws. Do you wanna know how I know? Because you've done this a million times? No, because I literally looked at the manual. You read the instructions. Sort, I mean, kind of. Kind of. Okay, so this is obviously gonna go on there. Yep. Now remember, this is metal on metal contact, so there's no foam to, there's no pesky foam to get in the way. Now I'm gonna just tell you something. I'm not worried about foam with this. Sorry, it's plastic, okay? That is a good fit, mm -hmm. okay? Now I did not torque that down yet. You wanna know why? Because you're gonna need all the rest of them lined up in I'm the I'm gonna right get way. them all started first, just for alignment, okay? See, like I said, in a perfect world, I'd let that dry for maximum effectiveness when I penetrate. You're supposed to let it dry? Yeah. I don't think I knew that. Well, you know what? Because I've never seen you do it. Listen, when you, when you work on industrial machinery, you learn a few things. And despite my best efforts in 18 years of doing it, I have learned a few things. I don't work on industrial equipment. I have learned many opinionated things that are probably wrong over the years. That's probably true. Most of which I've ignored and then made my own opinion based on factual, evidentiary, real life experiences. So now everybody start arguing with each other about Loctite. Ready, go. Comments are opened. <laughs> um, by the way, I can't get that one started. You wanna know why? Because you made one of those too tight so it won't move. <laughs> no, I got it. Oh. <laughs> I used the Loctite as lube. Well, listen. That's why you wear gloves. Okay, torque, torque. And you're like, but Brian, that was the last one. Yes, true, that's correct. See, I can't even do my prisoner voice today because I all, I sound the whole time. Yeah. Hey, Brian, this is taking forever. Hurry up this build. See, it's gonna screw up. Don't my hurt voice. your throat, though. <laughs> it's gonna screw it up. <laughs> I got this toilet wine. Oh, sorry, we're not supposed to, well, <laughs> we're probably not supposed to talk about toilet wine. Probably not. That's right. Toilet wine, guys, if you weren't, if you weren't already aware, is something they make in prison. <laughs> I don't know from personal experience, thank God, but we're working on it. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> Sorry, I gotta tell the people. What? Okay, so, oh. so I met the guy, the last human being that flew, well, at least that the government would admit to, that flew <laughs> this, the SR-71 in mm -hmm. real life. And yes. his name is Bert. Yep. And when he asked, he came up going off about, oh, toilet wine this and that. And I was like, what is wrong with this idiot? And it was hilarious because we met him at RC Fest. And he, and he obviously had watched a video or two. Yeah. So then we got to know this guy. And it was, it was really, that's one of the best things about this, this channel is that we've met so many different cool people. And not all of them have flown. SR-71s, and he not even most of them. And he didn't tell us that either. He did not tell he us that. He walked away and we found else out. was like, do you know who that was? <laughs> we found out later, yeah. okay? And then we went to another event and this crazy toilet wine guy was there again. Yes. You, you may notice I'm trying to install this yeah, why? Out, of, out of order. Why are you doing that? Okay. <laughs> it looks a little. Gloves off. My gloves are coming off. Okay. okay. Just I'm saying. Ready. So anyway, we met Bert and that was interesting. Bert's a nice guy. Um, it's really cool. A lot of people in this hobby have got to know us by watching our videos. And then they know us and they know how weird I am. And they just assume I know how, how normal they are. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> okay, see this? Watch. Right in the hole. Okay. It's a big hole. Well, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. No, there's a hole down here. This is probably the better hole to go oh, under there. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go down there. So watch this, guys. This is going to be amazing. It's gonna be miraculous. Now, 
All I'm doing is just lining it in there. I'm not really even doing anything too fancy. But I want to talk about this for a minute because you do need to make sure that wire gets in there into the right spot, okay? Because this cowl is going to need to get screwed in and I don't want to be taking it off, okay? Because it'll be a pain in the butt. So I'm just going to take this and really carefully hold it. Oh yeah, I'll be able to get that with forceps. Okay. You see where it is? It's in that battery box looking thing, okay? Oh, okay. All right, so now my next move is, obviously I need to put some screws in. And so if you were to guess which screws need to go in there, Cam Crew, which screws would you guess need to go hmm, in there? I'm gonna go with these <clears throat> little pan head screws. Hurry up, Brian! The wine's almost done. So anyway, Why Bert comes up. For sure wine with us? Bert comes up and, he, and, and he's going on and on about this. And, um, and so my wife had already, did you already talk to him yeah, before that? And so me. she, she he knew he was normal. She thought it would be funny. Because we were like back to back or some yeah. such thing. And uh, anyway, so, so I, mean, I did think it was funny, but only after I figured out what the heck was happening. Um, so it was funny. So if you guys ever use the inside jokes that we use on this channel, and if you haven't heard the toilet wine jokes yet, you haven't been watching very long. Um, so unlike most of our prisoners. <laughs> And that's our, our running joke, in case you guys didn't get it already, is that our videos are so long, the only people that would watch them are people that are in prison. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. If you're in prison, we're really glad to have your patronage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, screw one, not totally tight. Okay. Now, I'm going to, these work pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead, see it's all pre-drilled and everything. So it's really nice. It lined up pretty good so far. Yeah, but I'm not tightening all the way because it's sometimes you have trouble aligning the other side of the equation, okay? We might need to give one more example of people we've met that are interesting. We've met lots of people. We met lots of people. Seriously, lots of people. Yeah, it's And cool. it's pretty cool. Okay, so this, this is one of the holes I'm trying to find, okay? So now you'll notice that I need to get in here because I'm okay. not left-handed, so I'm gonna use my left hand to do this. Perfect. And that's about the time I end up dropping. You see what's going on here, guys? I have had this problem a million times because I'm right-handed and we film like this. I, I can never get my arm in the right orientation here. Really what I should do is pick this model up and move to that side of the counter for maximum annoyance of the camera crew. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> what you guys may not realize is that when your wife is not into RC and you make her film millions of man hours of video, <laughs> it, it does not necessarily pay dividends like you might expect. Shocking. So in case Shocking you guys were wondering, <laughs> maybe note to self, do not ask your wife to film RC things <laughs> because eventually RC things turn into other things. I'm thinking of one of our peers. <laughs> I don't know if they're really a peer. No, they're definitely not a peer. We are like a, a minnow on the back of that whale. Yeah. If you guys know who I'm talking about, put it in the comments below, because I can't say it. But I know some of you guys you know who I'm it? talking about. We'll see if they guess. <clears throat> Let's just say it has to do with electricity. There you go. And RC and maple syrup. What? Yeah, well, you don't, obviously don't know what I'm talking I don't. about. So guys, inside jokes are what we only, only occasionally do when we're tightening screws and it's getting a little boring, okay? So if you know what I'm talking about, put it in the comments below. By the way, we really appreciate you guys commenting and I apologize for being so far behind. I'm like years behind. Not about years. But I'll probably never get caught up. No. So if I haven't replied to your comment in like two years, I'm really sorry. I do occasionally catch the old ones. And we do try, we read a lot of them, even if we can't reply. And we try to reply to questions. If you have a specific question. Yeah. You know, you're looking for something. We try and hit those. Like she said. More. You see this? That's what she said. Okay. That is what she said. She just said literally it. said it. That's what I said. Okay, look. Holy oh, wow. tightness. Jeez. That is, is so, like. Is that a Okay. okay. <clears throat> That's, that's really close. I almost feel like I've done something wrong. But you were in the holes. I know, but look how freaking tight that is. Like that's, 
really tight. Well, but wait, when you moved it, that changed it a little bit. No, I understand that. But what I'm trying to say is like, that's really tight. I thought tight was good. Well, I mean, there are certain applications where tightness helps, but I feel like I'm deflecting the side of this cow. Okay. Okay. It's just, I mean, show the people from the side. That's an no, incredibly tight can, yeah. fit. Okay. It's so tight. I was going to get a piece of paper. Ooh. No, I mean, it's way bigger than that. Are you sure? Yeah, because like you can see my hand through it like, easily. So how many addendums thick is it? More than four or three, whatever that is. Holy cow, that is so tight. And I like that, that's good. Okay. That's tighter than the foamy. Yeah. So guys, just real quick. Here's a detail that I wanna just point out. When you get a foamy, you may think you're getting an inferior product. But anymore, you're probably getting a slightly more detailed product, but it's just heavier and a little bit more density, depending on the model, than you might get with a wooden plane, okay? So this is a pretty detailed model, and it looks like it's really well finished. Not always the case, folks. Now that doesn't mean that you're gonna be able to tell the difference in the air, and it doesn't mean that it's better or worse, because again, better or worse is a highly subjective point. Okay, now I don't know which side that goes on, so we'll figure it out. Okay, this drops in here, and then this bolt is gonna screw on. But I don't know how the sprinter's gonna go, so I'm not gonna torque that down yet. And you guys are probably thinking to yourself, you can't put that prop on, you're gonna cut your hand off. And let's just talk about safety for a few seconds here. We have built thousands of airplane, well, not thousands, hundreds. Hundreds. And I have been cut one time on a prop. And it was an Aero Commander that's not up there anymore. The Aero Commander, I was doing a bunch of weird, I was installing a second receiver. And I was trying to program the ESCs to behave in a certain way. And I, I made a mistake and I did get cut, okay? But it was like a paper cut. Some of you have been cut really bad. And no, you don't necessarily have to leave it in the comments below, but you can if you want, um, on what type of safety things you'd like to see me do. Obviously the best rule of thumb is keep them so you can do this, thumbs up, it's important. If you run this prop and you get cut, there is a possibility you'll be off with your thumbs, okay? So seriously, take it seriously. I'm not doing it in jest, even though we do make a lot of jokes on this channel about toilet wine. You have to do what you feel comfortable with. Yes. Don't do it because we do it or not do it because yes. we don't. But at the end of the day, you're gonna eventually have this thing powered up. And we have a procedure we go through that helps to mitigate some of the risk. It's not perfect, but it's more perfect than doing nothing. <laughs> okay, so I don't mind having this assembled because we do have to check the CG and all that stuff. Um, so if at some point you feel like, hey, you know, I'm just not comfortable doing that because I don't have enough experience or expertise, then please, by all means, wait to put it on, mm -hmm. okay? Now, what are the two things that people get hurt on in this hobby? I mean, obviously we're not speaking to a bunch of noobs on a plane like this, but the truth is, where do people get hurt? Props. Props and, and batteries. Batteries pose a slightly bigger risk, because like you can get cut, but at least it's just you. But generally speaking, lipos are where the most danger is posed. But if you're using smart packs, you have a very high probability of success, okay? That is a very nice fit and a beautiful prop, I might add. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Guys, our piece count is like getting very low. Yeah, it is. I'm loving this. Okay. Yep. Well, we do have a tail. We, we, we haven't like built. The we plane. haven't even built the plane, <laughs> which is funny. Okay. So as you can see, I can now take this back, lay it on the table. We're gonna put this back up here. We're gonna see how this goes. Obviously we need to be able to access the top and the bottom. Now, I don't know if you guys have connected the dots on why I wanted to assemble it in the order I assembled it, but really I find that having landing gear makes it a little easier to manipulate and move the planes. I'll have more positional choices. And I like to have a few different positions to choose from. Behave. Said nothing. Rammy RC. Mm. It's the slurping. Ah. 
Should I chomp from ice? I no, please do not. <laughs> she hates it when I do that. Okay, so all you dentists, tell me about <laughs> chomping ice. Been married a long time. Let so me know about that. chomping ice. Okay, there is a screw retaining this, and it was mentioned in the manual, which I quickly ignored. Mm-hmm. Obviously. Well, it said something about it. I just didn't read the whole thing. I just sort of skimmed it like... Blah, 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 blah. You just looked at the pictures? I just kind of made some noise like I was <laughs> reading it. So, go back, huh? all right, beginning. right here. Now we got to go back to the beginning. Usually you do the tail first. So did you just intentionally skip it to listen, go out of order? Listen, listen. We got to have something special on our channel. Right. Okay. Okay, so we have elevator, rudder. Crystal clear. See that? That's the plug. Okay. Okay, so obviously we skip these. There it is. Remove the screw holding the filler in position. Mm. Listen. You need if, a Phillips number two. <clears throat> I know. Okay. I knew that from experience. From not reading the manual? Yeah, obviously. Can't believe you almost read a manual without me. That would have been a jerk thing to do. If there's one thing you don't do. Okay, listen, there's all sorts of advice we give on Brian Phillips RC. Sometimes it's about what leaf blower to use. Sometimes it's how to handle marital bliss. Hey, and you people don't like that leaf blower, but we use but that, that leaf thing blower is awesome. all the time. We use it like literally almost every day. Mm -hmm. Like I'm gonna go out there and blow the garage. There's all sorts of blowing going on around yeah. here. They upped our snow totals for Friday too, by the way. Son of a beached whale. By the way, in case you were wondering, okay, so I just want to, I just want to point this out. There may, may have been a competitive brand that I crashed into a snow berm the last time we had berms that were we this high. Talk about it because it's making me nervous. Just listen. I'm not saying it happened for sure, but it may have happened. Well, we're going to put this together right now. Enough build up. The weather is not looking <clears throat> promising, so. So we might lose that opportunity. No, I'm so we're doing all this so that have, we can't fly. We have one opportunity. <sighs> so I need to stick this into that, right? Okay. Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. That's. Mm. Oh yeah. Wow. Oh. Okay. Ooh. You know, if you would help me stick it in, it would be more fun. Well, I'm holding other things. Like what? The Toilet room. wine cup or something? <laughs> no, nobody ever shares that. That's true. Bert, you big jerk. <laughs> Bert, he works a successful career as a fighter pilot and extraordinaire, you know. He flew all sorts of cool stuff. He did, actually. Okay, I'm looking at this and there's some extra play and slop in here that I didn't expect. But you have to stick... That's gonna go in there. No, listen, I have to stick this back in there too. First? I don't know. So I'm just gonna stick it in there. Ready? Kay. Go. Okay. If you guys are confused about all the sticking in of things, look at this. I'm serious though. That gap, no, 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 seriously, come around. See this? There's a gap here. Mm -hmm. This needs to be pressed in, but look, right there. Yeah. Okay. So when you press it in, it's gonna close So it. if you guys are wondering to yourself, how the heck did this idiot get this gig? We don't know. So, you know, miracles happen every day. <laughs> so, and then I know there's, <clears throat> let's see if this will go in. I just, I want to address the elephant in the room. Look at the elephant in the room. Look at this. That's That's disgusting. I cannot believe I it. I knocked that thing off. Knock it off. Me. So for those of you that don't understand what it's like to be married, <laughs> <laughs> We're back to that. To a perfect spouse. My wife can tell you all about it. <laughs> <laughs> you can only say things like this on camera. <laughs> because if it were any other place, I'd be getting hit. Whatever. <clears throat> okay. So, I did not have to glue this. Yay. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. And this is where I'm going to stick my nuts. Two of them. Okay and washers. They're sitting over there in that pile. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Okay. Right next so to the plastic. Hey, listen, this is important, okay? I'm oh, showing them your nuts. Okay, listen. I'm gonna put this in, right here, okay? Okay. You need to be good. You're gonna get us in trouble with the powers that be. 
Wait, where does that thing go? This thing? Yeah. It goes on the bottom. Okay. So you do have to kind of spin that out of the ray. The ray. Okay. Get it spun out of the ray. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking to yourself, you know, if this schlub can build this thing, I can do it, then you would be correct. Yeah. Because it's like Tommy Lasorto said, if I can do it, you can do it. And you're like, Brian, you don't seem old enough to know about Tommy Lasorto. Let me tell you something, I'm old. Yeah. Older than you probably think. Oh, son of a biscuit. If you don't know who Tommy Lasorto is. I don't know who, I mean, I like that. Yes, you though. do. I think. He's a football thing. Yeah, okay, I knew that. He didn't know but he used to do Weight Watchers or something, and I thought it was, he, was the he lost weight, and he was like, guy. if I can do it, you can do it. Uh, and then he, he probably put all the weight back on, just like humans do and stuff. I can't get that to drop down, and I'm not sure if I'm catching, but I just, I'm not trying to, listen. I'm listening. This is, this is not like a dynam issue. This is just. No, it's just tight. It's just, I'm just trying to be careful. Yeah because I don't want to damage the finish. Right. Okay. If you guys have ever watched, oh, dang it. I just don't know what I'm doing wrong here. I feel like I'm, I'm right there, but I don't want to damage it and I can only go so far. Show them the angle here. Do you guys see what I'm talking about right here? This, this piece of metal that constitutes the tail dragger wheel shaft, it's kind of preventing me from making the angle. Now, look. If I move this or this, I can kind of get up in here, but the angle, this is where I want to be holding it to do what I need to do here. And yet it's not wanting to go. Okay. It, every time you pull out, uh. yeah, I know you potentially pull up this, this stuff mm -hmm. and I don't want to pull up the ultra film or whatever it is, the old, the whatever film they used. Okay, so let's just look what we're doing wrong. So folks, if you ever do actually have a problem with your coating, like if you need to heat it up a little bit, I'm serious, this stuff is tight. It's tight like a tiger. See, I can't even do voices, mm -hmm. this is killing me. That was supposed to be Austin Powers, talking about a tiger. Toyga. So are you in the right spot? Yeah, it's just that, okay, tight. so this lip is catching right here. Okay, so I'm gonna just grab this and just press. Yeah, that's pretty much not, not gonna give. Okay. If I continue to have problems, I'm gonna cut just a little teeny bit off of each side of that. For now, I'm just gonna try ramming it in one more time. Okay. So folks, seriously, all joking aside, be super careful on this step because you only get one chance to get it right. And if you're careful, you'll probably get it right. And if you're not careful, like, oh yeah, it's in. Okay. Or no, it's not. Come on. I think it's it went so close. It I went just further that time. Okay, you can kind of see there. It's not, like, I think what's going on is you're just like three or four things that have to line up. And I'm not quite there. I could also work this a little bit because I think that's where our tolerance is screwing up. Mm -hmm. Do you want to show the people? Come around, show them right there. You see that right there? See this overlap? Yeah. That's not supposed to be there. I think. There, got, ooh, ooh. Closer, better. Okay. You guys see, I'm just, I'm using care. This is TLC, tender love and care. And I keep making the camera crew move because I need to move. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, we're in it. Nice. In it to win it, good. Okay. I'm glad I was careful. Yeah. Because I could have rushed that and screwed it all up. Yep. I am gonna screw it. Yeah, you got your screws and your nuts. Mm -mm. I don't understand. The screws are embedded. I don't understand the ice water, but. Well, my throat's weird. Seriously. True. I've been doing this stupid cold thing for like ever since Christmas. Yeah. It's driving me Weeks. nuts because it's like, it's such a non-issue, but my voice is like really hoarse. It's worse than it sounds. Okay, you see that? I have a big problem with that. <laughs> you may have noticed. See, these are the types of things you say them off camera, leads right. to problems. Yep. 
You say them on camera, you get away with it. It's hilarious. See, tick for tack. Yeah. Oh, those ribs are very questionable on the top. Be careful when you flip that plane, okay? So you'll notice it stays nicely. All right, and what are we looking get at? In there. I'm, I gotta put these screws on, okay? Look, these are gonna go on. Oh. You see that red thing popped out? That's probably what I was fighting. Maybe. Okay, now watch, trick of the day, folks. Flat bladed screwdriver or Phillips, doesn't matter. Slide this onto the shaft like that. Take the shaft, line it up. Oh, drop it down. And then the China glue screws you up. China, you're always cheating. China, stop it. Okay, we're going to Phillips this time. Oh yeah. Okay, you see what I just did there, guys? Mm -hmm. That worked nearly perfectly. Almost. Now, obviously these nuts, these nuts here are the wrong size to go through that same shaft, but this is really small. So like if you needed to, you could do that, but I'm not gonna have as big a problem because since this is a nut, I can use a nut driver in a 5.5 millimeter size. Okay, so I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna hold my finger over the hole, and then I'm gonna just say a prayer that this stays on there. Son of a biscuit lover, I knew it was gonna fall off. Now I'm gonna grab another screwdriver that might be more magnet, magnetetic. It did not work. I feel like I failed you, YouTube. YouTube, if you enjoy this type of content, long format content. I say long format and we mean it on Brian Phillips RC. We do. Okay? We don't do no stank in shorts, except that we do do really? stank in shorts. We just don't make a thing of it, you know? We think shorts are fun for like, you know, say when you're on the toilet pooping. But if you are watching an entire Brian Phillips RC episode and you're still pooping, you might need to talk to a doctor, okay? Because you're probably, your legs will be completely asleep. <laughs> you, you may actually have a problem, okay? We just, we want to take things seriously here in Brian Phillips RC. <laughs> so you were supposed to be good, sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say. That's supposed to be good. Kind of screwed the pooch on that one. Well, since we've gone off the deep end. Are you doing a different thing or are you just going to do the same thing and expect a different result? Listen, don't be so smart <laughs> and intelligent knowing exactly what to expect from me. I can't get this thing to stay on there and it's really challenging. So I'm going to try to find, admittedly, I'm going to try to find something that's small enough. <laughs> These things are only small at the very end. That doesn't do me any good. Okay, so hold that thought, I'll come right back. Okay, I'm using the linkage that's supposed to be used for the, the control rods. And I'm just touching this with my finger. I'm guiding it down. See how it started now? Oh yeah. All you had to do was not screw it up, Brian, and it would have been no problemo. Okay. And then I'm gonna torque this down until I start feeling crushing of wood. Now I'm gonna look down here, watch. I'll look right here. Ooh, ooh, that sounds ooh. terrible. And yet, nobody died yet. Okay. Look, watch this. Oh yeah, nice. nice. Okay, now I'm gonna flip this around. I'm gonna slide this in on the nylock end so the nylon is at the face. Then I'm just gonna hold it. Look at this, watch this guys. Oh, for the love of Pete, get on there. Pretty amazing, right? Mm hmm So, full disclosure, if you're building a plane like this, there's a very high probability that you already know how to do 99.9% .9 of the video, okay? And we understand that and acknowledge that. So if you're thinking to yourself, Brian, get to the point. I just need the radio set up. Brian, I just need the radio set up. The wine's almost done. Okay, calm down, we're getting there. We will, we will show the radio setup, obviously. And look at this, we've got three screws right here. Look, right there, one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Guys, look at the piece count on this model. This is incredible. Yeah. This has been an easy build. Seriously, easy. Yeah. Seriously. Okay, I'm just gonna stick the first one in. I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna go down one size and see if that helps to be a better outcome. 
Okay, now I'm not tightening them all the way. Okay, now I'm gonna just center this. Yep, there's the other hole. Because remember, this is pretty soft wood. So when you cram it in there, if you do, you can probably start them without even getting into the pilot hole, okay? Mm. So just be aware of it. I am gonna go back up to the next size up. So do we have one extra screw? No. There's one more screw that oh, needs to go in. there's three that go in that little thing? Yeah. Oh. Do you wanna know why? Because this is not a very strong piece of wood here. It's soft, er. Mm. And then all that weight that gets weight. bared onto yeah. the tail when you're taxing around. And by the way, I gotta say, you know, you guys are gonna need to be careful how you taxi this thing because of this tail dragger, okay? Just the mounting point makes me kind of nervous. Okay, pretty good. Okay. All right. And then this set screw needs to be torqued down if it's not already, and I think it already is. But let's go ahead and look at it. I think that's a 1.5 millimeter set. Yep, it is. Back this off, lower that down, and torque it down. Okay. So there you have it. <clears throat> All right, folks, so now the next thing we have to do technically is to put these on, but I'm gonna be a smart feller instead of a fart smeller. And we're gonna wait to do that. Why are we gonna wait to do that, camera crew? Are you gonna wait to hook them up at all? Because normally we would hook them up and then wait to actually attach them to the control horn. Yes, Rami, RC until we center the servos. But are you just gonna wait in general? How much more do you want me to talk about this while you're yes. thinking? Yes. 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 And yes. Favorite answer. Watch this. Big rod. Okay. I pulled these wires you out did. of the hole okay. off camera. I didn't mean to deceive you guys, the audience. We really do appreciate you and I don't often do things like that. I feel kind of bad about it all that prep work that you could have seen me do live and in person. I, th I think they'll see enough. Hey. Yeah. Can Hold I that. support that? Just yeah. be prepared. Okay. Okay. Remember. Okay. Like. Ooh, that sounded terrible. Let go, please. Okay. And do that. Just slide this together. There it is. There it is. Okay, so this is just a keeper here. Oh yeah, there is a little bit of dihedral on this wing, just full disclosure, so that's why it didn't lay flat like I thought it might, okay? So as you can see, we have one flap A and aileron A, and one flap B and one aileron B, okay? Like I said, we are gonna use Y cables. You may jump straight into the crow, but we will have a video showcasing exactly how to do that it's just not gonna be this video. And I just wanna show this wing. Now that we have this wing assembled, look how huge it is. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. Okay, I gotta be careful I don't forget. Wow. That's two meters. I'm evidently shorter than I thought. Well, you are getting old. Look at this, compared to the T28, Look at it going way past. Yeah. This thing has to be bigger than two meters. What the heck? Is this actually two meters or is it like close to two meters? I I'm, I'm six foot one, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, six foot two or three well, if are I'm you buying, buying life, insurance? life insurance today. What the heck? That's bigger than two. That's a lot bigger. I mean, are you complaining that it's bigger? No, I'm happy, okay. but it's just weird because why would they say two meter if it's like, I mean, if it's bigger, that's Rounding. better. Also, look. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, guys. Wait, hold on. Look at the that. size difference. That's big. That's one of the things I think that surprised me. This wing most. is like twice the size. Yeah. It's like, oh, 1.5 to 2, how much bigger of a difference can that sure. be? But it's a huge difference. Yeah, let's just say, exactly, it's big. Yeah. Huge. Okay. Okay. We were just talking about miracles earlier. They happen all the time. Yeah. 
All right, so battery lead. We need to get that one LED lead from the front. Mm -hmm. Hello. It echoes in here. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Do you want that off the plane stand though, or no. not yet? Look what I'm gonna do guys. This is really for real the way I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna grab where the ribs are. I'm gonna just do this. Okay, I can see that lead. Do you guys see the lead in there? I want them to see. You see the lead point at it? Where is it? It's up in the, it's oh, up it's in the nose. Up there. The yeah. Red is, yeah, right there. Okay, so that's the LED lead. So my next move is to get forceps because we're gonna pull that out. Why do I care about the forceps and getting the lead? Because it's gonna be a lot easier to do it now than it is later, yeah. okay? <clears throat> now, if you're unsure of the best way to get a wire from inside of a plane, that's because there isn't a best way. I just realized I could use this tool again. Oh. Yeah, I wanna keep this away from the Loctite because it might harden the plastic. But look at this, watch this. Boom. Okay. Or boom, I got that thing clamped on there nicely. But I don't want to drop this in there. So I got to make sure however I clamp it, I clamp it in a way that's not going to pop off, okay? okay. And I'm just going to go up in here. I can look through the windshield, which is pretty sweet. If this thing falls, it's going to be like, Hilarious for everybody watching, except for me. See the servo wire? I'm trying to get this wire. I'm bisecting the wire. Okay, cam crew, are you like filming what I'm doing? I'm Why are you over there? Come around here so you can look through the windshield. Look straight down that through the windshield. Mm -hmm. That's because it's invisible. See this? Kinda. <clears throat> I'm having one heck of a time getting this thing. And you can't just reach it with the forceps. You know, that is probably worth considering. Let's see if we can do that. Good idea, camera crew, because I did move it a little bit. Yes! Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Why does it feel like it's stuck? Oh. That's probably because it is a little bit stuck. I just hope I didn't pinch it really bad. But if I did, better to find out now. <clears throat> so now, one of the things we have to do is we have to land these wires because I don't want to have to chase that thing out again. Right. Admittedly, that cable seemed like there should have been kind of a lot more. Why does it feel so short? I don't know. Makes me nervous like it's pinched between the side or something. It didn't seem like when you... Yeah, I felt like it, it seemed like we'd have a ton of extra length. So that leads me to believe that the thing is caught on something. But you know what? Maybe it's not. Okay. But that has to get back to... There's a Y cable splitter thing here. See this? Oh, I see that. I'm literally holding it. So this is where we kind of morph from normal just build to like radio setup. This is technically not radio setup, but it's going to be sort of mixed in a little bit. Because you have to do this before you put the wing on, correct? Right. Yeah. I'm going to turn the light on and see. Please do. It's... Oh, okay. I can still see through the windshield. There's mm -hmm. a little bit of a glare, but they'll, they can see better. They'll get over it is what you were saying? They'll get over it. Okay. Just don't look at the bottom third of your screen. You could, you could move to another spot if you need to. No, it's, it's not going to bother you. No, it's the flash. It's in the reflecting off the black. Okay. So you guys see what I'm doing? Brown is up in this case. See? So now I just need to keep away from getting tangled on something else. And the truth is there's just like so much room in here, but then the battery is gonna go up here. Oh, that's right. Is this thing removable? Is it? Well, something's gotta oh. be removed. I feel like such an <laughs> idiot. Okay. That whole thing is like, off? Yeah, it does. Okay, that's good. Okay. This is so what we now, now I look like a complete moron, but it's okay. I don't mind looking like a moron online because it's all part of the show. Brown is up. Okay, so since this is up, now I don't know why they chose to use servo connectors instead of using like a more standard JST. 
for this. Okay, so there's one. So that's the one I was most concerned about, okay? So you can see the smart ESC, the 100 amp smart ESC. Tons of room in here for the battery. Now they did mention something in the manual about Velcro. Now, let's talk about Velcro for a minute. I don't use it. Okay, done. <laughs> that wasn't a minute. There's a strap that's included. This is a high quality strap, I like it, okay? Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna use this. They say specifically in the manual that this stuff is not going to stick directly to <laughs> the wood that's in there. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You wanna know why? Because the wood is probably slick and then the adhesive isn't gonna stick. Okay, so now that we have two batteries prepared, we're gonna show you the trick of the day again. Okay, trick of the day is shelf liner, okay? This battery is 100% done, 50C 6S Gen 2. Let's see how this does. This is shelf liner, it's designed for shelves. Or drawers. Well, you can stick it wherever you want, but yes. Well, I mean. <clears throat> In our case, we like to use scissors, a little bit more china glue. China glue, but then also sometimes you might need to get, oh my goodness, a Q-tip. And if you don't have a Q-tip and china glue in your drawers. In your kitchen drawers. Along with your shelf liner, then you might be doing something wrong. Okay. So shelf liner. As you can see, I've made a nice clean cut. I'm going to put this in here. And this is going to be so easy because then the battery is going to stay in position perfectly. Where are you going to put it? Oh, where do you want me to put it? Wow. I'm going to cut this as though I was trying to get the whole battery in there. That is unusual. We don't normally put that much on because it's not really necessary. But this is a bigger plane. And I just want to talk about safety for a minute since we are doing a little bit different deviation from the way the manufacturer suggests. So I'm just gonna say this right now. This is what we were doing. You don't have to do it this way. The other thing you can do is this stuff works really good to make a battery pack holder. And I am deadly serious when I say this. This stuff is awesome for that. You make it fit with a relatively tight fit and then you make your battery pressure fit into there. And it's a really nice way to do it. But you still have to use caution because if that battery comes flying out of this machine, I promise you, you're gonna crash. But you probably already done crashed if it's flying out. Yeah, probably. How do I know? Because it's experience. never happened to us. Experience. <laughs> Watch, look, see this? So wherever that battery ends up, I want this thing to be in there, okay? Okay. Now, I don't have to glue it yet, but when I do glue it, I'm gonna put a very light coat and I'm gonna let it tack and then I'm gonna stick this down. Because if you overdo it, this thing is gonna be a big mess because it's gonna bleed through. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna lay this down, just like that. You're probably thinking to yourself, but Brian, look at that prop, it could cut your face off. And I know there's probably a small group of you that would love to see that. I'm gonna avoid it at all costs, okay? But also I wanna talk about something else. We don't need to leave the wing off. We don't. Right. Okay. Is that actually supposed to go up through that kind of like firewall? Because there is a hole that's like battery sized. Well, I mean, you can stick it in there if you want, but you, it just depends on where the CG ends up or how the CG ends up working out. Okay. okay, so there's a relief cut here and a relief cut here for the strap. I'm assuming the strap is gonna go all the way around, but I'd really like to go into there and into there because then we don't run the risk of actually breaking the wood as easily. Okay, do okay. you see what I was talking about? Mm -hmm. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and pull this out. <clears throat> it always amazes me how batteries and wires and stuff in RC airplanes always figures a way to get tr tangled on itself. Mm -hmm. In the most obscure places. Now, if you tighten your battery too much, you will make it very easy to break this balsa wood or plywood tray, okay? So the easiest way to avoid breaking the tray is to not over tighten this. But remember, we're just connecting the battery to the plane so it becomes one with the plane. OK, 
Okay, I'm just gonna lay it down there in the easy way that I think it's going to go. And then I'm gonna pull this thing tight. Did I tell you yesterday I hurt my thumb? You did. Yeah, it's really annoying. I'm sorry. You should have me kiss it later. Okay. Okay, see, look, amazing. And you're probably thinking, there's no way that's gonna hold it, and you would be correct. Because I didn't tighten it enough. Well, and you haven't glued the shelf liner down either. Shelf liner doesn't need to be glued. No, it won't. It, the it, pressure it won't will be it. glued, but it doesn't need to be. Okay, so we've got that tighter now. Okay, guys. I want to show you something. Look. If your plane is being stressed or there is a 100% shift in G's, I was trying to avoid that earlier. And you did avoid it earlier. <clears throat> if that happens to you, you, only you can prevent forest fires. Crash. Yes. Seriously. So you probably made a mistake, okay? I make them, everybody makes them, okay? So I just wanted to point out how this is laying and it's plenty sturdy, but it's gonna be better once we get the shelf liner map um, mounted in there. And I just wanna talk about how that thing didn't move, okay? But it is allowed to pivot a little bit, so don't let that freak you out too much, okay? Everybody understand? Great. Mm -hmm. I am really annoyed by the way this battery is fitting in here because I want that lead to not be a difficult thing to work with. Now, no, I'm not plugging this in. I'm gonna put the negative to the negative. See this, negative, negative, why? Because I just want that to hold together so I don't have to go digging for it, okay? It is not plugged in, people, just the ground. So look at this. Okay. Beautiful. Nice. I like it. Okay, <laughs> so now the next move, so one other thing you can do is you can use double-sided tape or this provided Velcro to actually put shelf liner on both sides. And then that'll give you a little bit more thickness that will compress when you're trying to tighten your strap around your battery. That might make it a little easier, but there's just more stuff in there. So I'd like to keep it as simple as possible and get the job done, okay? So our next move is gonna be to mount the wing, which means we need to land wires. In order to land the wires on this application, it's gonna be pretty simple. I'm gonna try not to hit that light again, but there's a good chance I'm gonna hit it again, just because I'm a moron, okay? So look at this, guys. Right here, oh, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna very carefully lay it down, okay? Okay. It's gonna balance, sort of. I'm thinking about this. I don't know if that's gonna come off once the wing is installed. I'm not sure. Give me a second, we're gonna pause and look at this. So my concern is that this wing will not so subtly fall off the side of the plane. So I'm just looking at the resources. We have that foam that came with the plane. We have this foam that came with the plane. And remember, there's nothing that holds the joiner together. It's just pressure fit until it gets in and gets bolted. So they could slide apart. So that's the other Thing I'm concerned about. I was thinking this thing that had the tail held together might be nice to protect the finish. If there is a concern, I'm gonna try to do this and see if it helps. Seems to fit okay. Great, I can live with that. So now, listen, you're gonna have to come around here and point that camera into the cavity here. There is room to work, but it's still kind of a little bit awkward, okay? So you see this? It wouldn't be near as awkward if that Y cable from the front was a little bit longer. Okay, now I just have to be like genuinely a little bit careful. Okay, so I have brown going toward the camera crew and I am just literally, oh, thank you for falling. I'm literally going to put the wires where I think they need to be and then I'm hoping I don't regret it, okay? See what I'm doing? I clamped this on with the forceps and then I can let go. Then I'm gonna take another pair of forceps. Guys, if you don't have forceps, you need to get some. 
Mm -hmm. We have links to them. There's nothing magical about these. I just got them like at Menards. You may not have Menards where you live, but if you don't have Menards where you live, then just go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. And you might be able to get them there. If not, just follow the links. Okay, so brown is away from me. Brown is toward me. I should probably flip this over. Okay, flip it like that. Okay, so you can clip those. They're called hemostats or forceps. Then once you clip them together, then you can get in here and uh, land those wires. You're probably thinking to yourself, Brian, you're making this harder than it has to be. Just take the thing off of the other thing. And I'm like, yeah, it's not quite that simple because here's the thing. I don't want to mount over this because that's going to be contacting the bottom of the wing. I have to, I'm, I'm just like not feeling this right now. I'm going to keep hold of this and Gosh, why did they do such a short cable? It's like, seems like it was really long until I had to go do until the you thing. you actually had to do it? Yeah. Now it's like, holy crap, you got to do this every time you go to the flying field? Okay, so check this out. I'm going to just see if I can get my hand in here better. Okay, so red is in the center. Brown is up now. I have this backward. So I'm flipping this. Oh, yeah, that, that I can get now. So folks, if you're brand new to the hobby and you're trying to figure out how to get your, your own wheels up in the air, you're in the right place. This is Brian Phillips RC. What we do is we unbox, build, and radio set up these planes so that you don't have to figure out everything by reading a stinking manual. Who wants to read a manual anyway? <laughs> so we usually ignore the manual for you and then work our way through the build because we use our wealth of experience and knowledge from having built hundreds of other planes. I'm being kind of a smarty pants, you may have noticed. <laughs> Brown is toward me. Now I just need to get this one. And it feels great because that's where my vicious thumb injury is. Yeah, if it looks like we're stumbling and bumbling through this step, we totally are. Do you want to know why? Cause this is just awkward. I say it looks a little bit there's, awkward. There's no getting around it, folks. This is this is quite awkward. Why is this cable so short? Like, did they save a few bucks on it? I'm not sure. E flight, if you're watching, which I'm sure you're probably going to watch and be all bent out of shape that I said something negative about this, but that's what we do. In case you hadn't noticed, we review planes so that our consumers of our videos will know what they're getting into and they'll know to have forceps. But the truth is, we really do like E-Flight products. They're generally very good. And it's unusual to have this type of a weirdity. Um, okay, so brown is up. Gosh, I got it backward. <coughs> so flipping the wire to the other direction. And I'm sorry, guys, I can't move the camera for the camera crew. So if she is not getting the shot, I am hamstrung totally. Okay, so once I get these started, hopefully they'll slide together. Goodness gracious. If these were micro, if these were just GST connections instead of uh, servo connections, it would be slightly easier. Goodness gracious. I have to flip my forceps the other direction so I can get purchase in the angle. You keep moving that light and it's super frustrating. Sorry. See how it's slipping on me? I have to try to stick my hand through this tiny hole. Yes! 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 I can reach now. Now that I'm done, I figured out how to reach it. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> that could have been worse. Now we have a splitter that's on channel two. I'm going to guess that's ailerons. And then channel six, I'm going to guess that's flaps. And I'm gonna say guess, but I mean educated guess. Okay, brown is up, brown is up. Oh, that does not feel like I got it totally purchased on there, mm, but I did. Why do they not have retention clips on there? Okay, brown is up, brown is up in this case. So this of course is the other half of the Y cable for the ailerons. See, I'm laying this over the top because I don't wanna to forget to put it down nicely but that's gonna drop into this cavity. Guys, I just realized something. Crap.
where do they actually reach? Look, I just realized my mistake. Look at this. Those LEDs are on the front. The ailerons are on the back. Ah, oh, son of a biscuit lover. Okay, well, whatever. We'll have to redo those. Maybe we'll spare you the details, I'm not sure. Brown is down. Brown is down for the flap. Now I go to the second one. Brown is down. And brown is down. So now, guys, do you see what I did wrong? Mm -hmm. These come out the front half, and everything else, more important, comes out the back half, okay? So that means I have to, one at a time, put these to the front half instead of the back half. And that's pretty easy to do. And look what I'm doing this time. It's like so much easier. So you're seeing little Chinese, tiny hands. Tiny hands. <clears throat> that's true. You know what they say about tiny hands, hon? Mm-hmm. What do they say? I thought it was supposed to be good. <laughs> it, mean, it means it's easier to build RC airplanes. Oh. That's what they say. That's what they say. That's totally what I was thinking. <laughs> I'm sure you did. Okay, so here this is. I'm gonna drop that down. Sorry guys, we made that harder than usual. Um, now I'm gonna put the wing on. Okay, so that foam's gonna drop down and that's fine. I want it to. So now I'm just gonna slide this together and see if it goes. So now, <clears throat> I gotta admit, for being a plane that's huge, which means you're gonna probably have to take it apart in most people's application. See this at an angle? Oh, for God's sake. I am having trouble fitting my shaft into the hole. This side fits. Outside this side I'm having a cram. Okay. I can tolerate a little crammage, that's fine. But I did have to cram. Now I'm gonna take my hand through the window and just pull this wire for the LEDs and just drop it down in there, okay? Drop like a saw, just like that. Okay. Amazing. So what I was saying is, seems like maybe that process is a little bit involved. If I was, if I was gonna have to build and unbuild this plane every time, which I'm not going to, um, I would be putting extensions on those things to make it like way easier. Mm -hmm. because I would not want to go through all that tediousness. Okay, so now I do need to get a flat bladed screwdriver for this. I'm gonna use the number two flat. This is a 3 16 not a number two. Oh, jeez. Okay. Turn it till it's square. <clears throat> Ooh, ooh, see that wrinkle? Mm -hmm. That's not cool. Okay, I gotta look at this here a little closer. You guys see what's going on here? Yeah, see the yeah. wrinkle? I'm gonna relax this just a little bit. I'm gonna take and hold on to the bulkhead up here. There we go, now we should be good. Whew. That was close, very scary. Okay, good fit. This plane's big. Yes. I like that. It's like... Huge. The size of the island. Almost. Oh, yes. You have to fit into here. See that? In here. The tolerance is very tight. You see this, guys? Look. The tolerance is super tight there, but it widens up at the bottom. Come over here so they can see. See how it widens up? So you have to line those up first, then it drops down. Oh, good lordy lord, get in there. Do you guys see what's happening? Mm hmm Oh, man. Okay, it's in. That is not a very fun thing to have to do. Okay, and then also, it's one piece. It is. But you have to do that every time you get the battery out. 
Yeah, you're going to need... I don't like that. You're going to need to use some finesse. Is it going to loosen up a little bit over time? I don't know. I'm not sure how to answer I mean, that question. if you work it a lot. Okay. Challenge accepted. Oh my goodness, don't hit the lamp. I know, I gotta be careful. This thing is huge, okay? Where? Oh, yes, it's so, so special. It's, guys, this thing is big. This thing is like gasser size big. I'm loving it. Okay. <clears throat> you saw it first on Brian Phillips RC. The build is done. Now we just gotta do some radio setup. We're gonna have to mark the CG here in a minute. So our next move is, obviously we gotta fire this thing. This is a big powerful motor. I know you guys are probably a little concerned. I'm gonna cut myself, which I'm not going to. I'm gonna be careful. We talked about some checks and balances that we're gonna do. Obviously we have to attach the tail feathers, both the horizontal stabilizer for the elevator and the rudder. Um, these are ready to go okay. soon. Note that there is a difference in length, okay? So that's because one servo has to reach a little bit further. So the shorter one goes to the elevator and the longer one goes to the rudder, okay? In the manual, <clears throat> they tell you where to land <coughs> the connecting rod. So if you look at this, going to tell you where to put it okay so if you want to tell me which holes to stick it in that'd be great this is the elevator okay so elevator is the outside hole on the control horn megan they're both control horns well no on, on the servo on the servo it's the middle hole Num count how many holes are in that picture one two three four five six so it's the third hole from the outside What's the outside? This is the outside. You said there's six holes? Yeah. Just give them a close up of that. How many holes do we have here? Well, I don't know. You'll have to count. I can't see, it's too bright. There's seven holes. Well, there's one that's reamed out. Yeah, I understand, but I just wanted to point out the fact that there's seven holes on the actual control output, and there's six holes in the drawing. So what the heck is it? That's it's frustrating. Oh, let's look at our picture. What picture. Can you please be careful? You about knocked the wing off. This picture, this picture might show seven holes. Nope, it also shows six holes. Still six. So the addendum is also wrong. Okay, <laughs> whatever. All right, so guys, that's why you watch Brian Phillips RC so we can discover the problems and then help you avoid making them because this is after all part of the hobby okay so the longer one needs to go to this but i am just physically going to put it in here now okay because i don't have any interest in actually putting it in permanently and that's by design okay so this goes on to the outside portion and then it just snaps down and it retains the linkage okay like that pretty simple but I don't want to forget to do it. I don't think you could, because you're not gonna get very far. Now, on the rudder, the rudder needs to be also in the already reamed hole, okay? So this one, they show it on the inside, do they? Or am I mistaken? I think it needs to be on the outside. I think I may have done that wrong on the elevator. No, you can actually do it either way. They show it outside pointing to the inside. Yeah, yep. like that. Like that, okay. I did the elevator the other way and I'm gonna probably switch it. Do you guys wanna see what I did wrong? Look, I put this on the inside. Now there is technically clearance for it, but I just feel like I'm tempting fate. So I am going to undo this. I'm gonna try to do it closer to what the manual said in this case. It probably would have been fine but this is kind of what they actually call out in the manual. 
I think the reason I did that is because this clip is going to be upside down now. See? Which I'm oh. not crazy about. I see. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, and maybe our clearance is actually worse there. Shoot. Well, I mean, does it matter? Technically, it probably doesn't. But I just don't want to cause a problem. Okay, so literally the next step is radio setup. Okay. okay. Now, radio setup on this model, you can... The radio setup on this model, we talked about safety features that we're gonna, or kind of like a protocol that we're gonna use. So obviously we need to have access inside. So that comes off. I don't wanna have my body close to it, and I don't wanna knock the bananas off my stand, That'd be obviously. Terrible. So the first step we have to do when we're doing radio setup is we generally like to have a model built, okay? Now this is a bind and fly, so it should be quite easy to do. And so that's gonna be our next move is we're gonna build the, the model profile, just the basic one. And then from that, we will build on it, okay? So where do we start when it's a bind and fly? We usually like to look over this page, which shows DX, NX, and IX. So we're gonna be using the NX. We're gonna power on the transmitter. Okay, we're gonna hit back and cancel and we're gonna scroll down to add new model. We're gonna create an acro. It says add new model, create. Okay, fine, takes a while on mine because I got so many models. And then we're gonna input a name of our choice and then we're gonna go to function list and set all this crap up except we're gonna do it our way, okay? See, it came back out now. So we're gonna type in our name here. Yes, I do use a legacy keyboard, by the way, in case you're wondering. Okay, so we have the model name in there, Turbo Timber SWS, two meter. Aircraft type. So it should say here, except it doesn't. So this pretty much is useless to us, right? But they do talk about the flap system. I guess we'll use that. So we wanna set it up. <clears throat> has one aileron, one flap, okay, in a normal tail. I'm going to select an image from a standard file. We'll do like the carbon cub. We're going to set up flight modes. Uh, yep, they left all that out, okay. It's probably in somewhere else. But we'll talk about the full crow setup later. That's not gonna be in this particular video, but we will have a video about it that's specific, so you can use it. <clears throat> I want my switch D to do this. We're gonna have a spoken flight mode. I'm just gonna push this out of the way for now. Flight mode one, in my case, is going to be AS3X. So I can just cancel, cancel, and clear it, and I'll type it in now. Okay, so AS3X, and then we'll set the spoken portion, which is way down here. Okay, so here is AS3X mode. AS three X mode. Then we're gonna set this to off. Remember, this is just a label, guys. It's only going to basically display the letters on the screen and it's gonna say the word, but this doesn't actually set the settings. We'll show you how to do that a little bit later. Okay, then this is gonna say off. AS3X mode. Okay, and then this one is going to say safe. Because I'm gonna clear, clear, cancel. And then I'm gonna to go to sensor assisted flight envelope here. Remember, just a label. And then we'll set up the audio of that. And then select safe. Oops. Okay, so we can go back out of there. Channel assign. Um, aux two, I wanna unassign from B because I use B for flaps. And we'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Okay, first things first, I wanna go into throttle cut, most important feature, switch H. Make sure it's working by looking down here. If I move the throttle stick, does that move? It doesn't, that means it's on, good. I'm gonna turn it off. It looks like it springs to life, very good. Throttle cut's on. <clears throat> then I wanna set up flap system to switch V in my case. 
Okay, and if you look over here, they actually give us the setting for position zero. Position zero is 45. The elevator is zero at that, then position zero, and then position minus negative 45. Excuse me. <clears throat> elevator correction is gonna be nine. And elevator correction is gonna be three. And I'm gonna set my speed to two seconds. It might need more on a bigger plane. Okay, so then we need to also set up our standard dual rates in Expo, which are gonna deviate from this plan here, just a little bit. I like to have everything on one switch. You may not like that. If you don't like the way we set it up, that's fine. Just set it up to your taste. Five, then 10, that's where we're gonna start. Then 20. We're going to reduce the rates. Okay, so that's our neutral starting point. Got about half there. Got about double there. That makes sense. Okay, and we're going to do that on each of the three control axes, setting them all to the same switch. This basically gives us a starting point, <clears throat> and it gives us an out. Remember, half of the battle in flying RC airplanes is having the ability to get to the ground on your maiden flight. If you hadn't connected the dots, when I fly, I'm flying for maiden flights the vast majority of the time you guys see me fly, which puts me at a bit of a disadvantage because I don't generally fly these planes hardly at all before we show them. Sometimes you do, but it's rare, okay? Okay, very good, so we're gonna start here. Then we'll have a halving effect or a doubling effect. If we get in the air and it's too touchy, more. Expo, less rates. Or if we get into the air and it's not touchy enough, we go to that, okay? So very simple, very basic. Okay, so we'll walk out. Now we can set up a timer, although it's probably not gonna matter because we're gonna have telemetry. We'll still set it up. They don't mention anything about it. So I'm gonna set the timer to five minutes to start, <clears throat> which is probably way shorter than it needs to be. I'm gonna have one out active. At one minute, we're gonna have a voice. At 20 seconds, nothing. At 10 seconds, we're gonna have a voice countdown with an expiration showing tone and vibrate with the tone every minute thereafter. So now we go over 25%, it's gonna start counting down. We're gonna cancel the clear or it's just gonna count until it's out of time. So we don't have a retracts on this. So this is gonna have no function, but I'll leave it in the retracted mode for me. Also, at some point, we're gonna set up thrust reverse, I assume, here. Okay, so we haven't done anything with that yet. Okay. Throttle cut is on. That's the most important. I'm gonna go to monitor. I'm gonna move my throttle stick, verify it's not working, which is what we want. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna click and I'm gonna go down to bind. I'm gonna highlight it, but it's not going to time out. Now we have to be careful that we don't get cut. Verify my throttle cut. I wanna make sure things like this are far away from the plane. I want to make sure the plane is otherwise secured, meaning I need to be in a spot where I can control this thing in the unlikely event that it would start moving and it's going to be strong. So this is a check and balance. Okay. I need to make sure I can reach the power cord so I can unplug it from a safe angle. The camera crew is going to be safe. So what I'm going to do now is I have the plane under control. I have my transmitter ready to bind. I'm actually going to slide the plane over just a hair. Now I'm going to have to press a button to bind. So I'm going to plug this in first. So far, so good. I'm going to wait, make sure we're safe. Okay, so far we're safe. Because it hasn't started to run, I have my control in my hand. I have this thing safe. And I'm going to have to reach in there and hit the bind button, which I'm not crazy about. We can trust everything so far because we haven't had any reason to mistrust this electronic. I'm gonna have my hand in here. I press the button, I see the fast flash. You show them the fast flash quick, make sure you're out of the way. Okay, now if you wanna show them the fast flash while I hold the plane, I'm gonna to go to bind and I'm gonna bind. Okay, first dance.
Still holding the plane, I don't trust anything yet. Now I'm gonna start moving controls. Yep, we have control of the rudder, we have control of the elevator, we have control of the ailerons, and we have control of the flaps. We are going to make some adjustments because it's not going into the right position just quite yet, and that's okay. So that means the only thing I haven't tested is throttle. Throttle cut's still on. I'm gonna use my mouth to move the stick. I now verified that the throttle cut's working. Now I'm gonna very carefully shut off throttle cut, make sure it doesn't jump. It didn't. Now this is gonna be powerful, so I'm gonna just go barely at all. Very good, the thrust is forward. Throttle cut's on. And now I have vetted the system so I can trust it. At least to a certain extent, okay? Obviously bright LEDs, very cool. That's a serious moment for us in every build we do because it's the only time we put ourselves a little bit of harm's way because I wanna have the prop installed. All right, so now our next move is we have an elevator movement and we have a runner movement, but it's not attached to anything. So our next move is to attach those points, okay? So our first thing to do is look at the manual. The rudder and the elevator call for us to install the control horns in the outermost position, I believe. We're gonna verify that. So as you can see, the flaps, rudder. Rudder goes to the outside, elevator goes to the outside. So it should be easy. Now we can trust that the elevator and rudder are in the center positions. So what I wanna do is I wanna center this control and then I wanna make sure that this plugs in, okay? So it may or may not line up. My guess is it probably won't. I'd be lucky if it did. You'll notice that's going kind of uphill a little bit when I'm holding that about where it's gonna go. So I'm gonna take this fuel tube and slide it back. Then I'm gonna take and screw this in. One, two, three, four. I'm clearing my timer because I don't care. Five, six, seven, eight. Just arbitrary counting, by the way. We're getting close. Now nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, we're getting pretty dang close. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Getting darn close there, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Looks pretty level. So let's go ahead and insert the rod. Okay, so I have to pop this opened. Okay, if you wanna show them from this other angle now. See that, how I pop that open? Mm -hmm. So now once I've popped it open, I can slide this in and snap it. And then I can put the fuel tube back on. Okay, that fuel tube is gonna keep it from popping off easily. Now we're gonna revalidate our position over here. Please. That does not look straight. It's got a little bit of down elevator, which I don't want, okay? So the elevator moves up, the elevator moves down. Everything seems to move, but I don't like where we have that. That needs to go up just a hair. So I'm gonna slide my fuel tube back. I'm gonna go ahead and pop off the connector. And I need to go up just a hair, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go out, there's one, there's two. Now I'm going to slide it back in to the outermost condition and I'm going to just double check. Nope, it needs to go out even further. Probably another one turn again. There's one, there's two halves, that's one turn. Okay, I'm going to make sure this is square, I'm going to snap it. That looks pretty dang straight. Another half turn though, at least. Half a turn, get it lined up, slide it in the hole, snap it. That's pretty much perfect. I don't think it's gonna get any more perfect than that. Now I'm gonna slide my fuel tube back down, and then I'm gonna double check my elevator movement, up and down. Roll left, roll right, okay. Those are probably plugged in wrong because you see how they're down and up respectively. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. That is correct and that is correct, but there's something not quite right about that. Because also my takeoff flaps, see this? Look, I don't want to overdrive my servo, but that's neutral. That is not correct. It's in the wrong position. 
Okay, now rudder, rudder is going to be, wow, that's like really close. I have to kind of stand up here and hold this here to center it. And then I have to do the exact same thing I did. That's like really dang close. I think we kind of got lucky on this, okay? So once that is ready to go, I can slide the fuel tube back. And I can pop this in. And you can see it is favoring, we need to go just that way. So that means I need to come out half a turn or maybe one. So here's one, two, halves. Square it, and then go into the outside hole. And you guys see what I'm talking about, how perfect that is now? Very easy. Remember, you always wanna start from as perfect as you can get the plane before you get it in, in the air the first time, because there's gonna be minor changes no matter what you do. And if you start from imperfect, and then you mix in all the imperfections of reality, you're gonna have a hard time flying it, okay? Rudder left, rudder right, elevator up, elevator down, yaw left, excuse me, not yaw left, roll left, roll right. That's rolling the correct direction, but you see how high this one is? It's way up. And you see how low that one is? Mm -hmm. I have seen this before. Just for grins, I wanna try this. Servo setup, travel, reverse, ailerons. It didn't move the absolute position. Okay, now obviously we don't want them to go the wrong way. So that is correct, but if that's the case, then the only way to remedy that is to undo this right here and level it. But I found that numerous times in, when building models, if you have to reverse the controls, many times the absolute position will change just a little bit, okay? So in order to do that, I'm gonna slide this back. I'm gonna pop this off. I can't believe how far off they are. That's really yeah, that's really strange. Okay, now I'm gonna pop this back together and go way in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm gonna square it up with respect to. Yeah, that's like really unusual on an e flight product. The last time we had one do this to us, it was like the EC 1500 version one. That's too, too far. far down. Yep. So I need to come back out probably. Like, One, two, three. Let's try three. Okay. So you guys kind of get the idea of what we're doing here. I don't want to bemoan the issue, but I do want to get this right. Because this is the difference between having success and having failure. And that's one of the big things that we do here on this channel is we try to help you guys have success. If you're returning to the hobby, there's no reason you can't get into the air really easy. If you're used to flying more complicated, harder to fly planes from years ago, you're gonna find that airplanes nowadays are even easier than what you remember. But it's still a skill that has to be reinvigorated. But we're gonna try our best to help get you up to speed on the technology. I turn that so I can reach. This one's way down, okay? Mm -hmm. So you see how far down that is? Yeah. I'm just trying to line up the tip here and there, okay? So now I can pop this off, slide the fuel tube back, pop this off, I obviously need to extend so that it goes up quite a bit. If you're not sure, just grab the control surface and then look right here, right here. Hun, look right here. What I'm doing is I'm holding the aileron where I want it. You can see that it needs to come out, okay? So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. That's probably pretty close to what we need. Let's check it. Nope, not enough. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Nope, half a turn. Let's see if that does it. Okay, so there's half a turn, that's about perfect. Okay, snapping it in, and then sliding the fuel tube back, okay? Now our ailerons should be mostly centered. And as you can see from behind the plane, we roll left, we roll right, everything seems good. We're not overdriving servos. That's important to check on. <coughs> also, I just want to talk about the flaps next because these flaps are weird because those flaps should obviously not be in the middle position right now. I don't really understand why they're in such weird condition. Yeah. Did we have an instruction to make an adjustment on that? 
No, you did what was on the programming page. Did I skip something maybe? I don't think so. Flaps. I don't see anything on here. No. Okay, well whatever. Okay. I guess we gotta make a pretty big adjustment, which is not a big deal. It's just kind of weird, weird on yeah, a bind and fly. So hopefully you guys don't have the same problem, but it said uh, plus 45, minus 45. But if I were to rotate the flaps, okay? I'm just afraid to rotate them now. I know. Because I don't want to damage and overdrive those servos. So in this case, I'm going to go to the neutral and that's overdriving them up. That's why you hear the hum. Mm -hmm. So watch this flap system. This is the only position where we're really safe. Okay, so you see what's going on? This should be takeoff flaps, something like this. Okay, so I'll do 45. And then for this, now I can walk them up into the home position. And they're not even centered, are they? Son of a biscuit lover. See, it's at 11. But look at this. This side over here, camera crew, mm -hmm. is down. Way down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab and pull this off just like we did with the ailerons and the elevator and the rudder. Okay, slide that back. Okay, it's kind of nice to have the fuel tube there. It makes it easier to spin them. Is that okay or am I shadowing you? No, you're fine. Okay, so now that needs to go out. Oh, good Lord. Good Lordy Lord, Lord. That is hard to spin. Very hard, okay, there we go. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see if that's enough. And it looks like we might actually overshot. So here's four and three. Let's see if three does it. Three half turns. Is that up too high? I'm having trouble telling. Nope, it's up too high. Okay, so I'm gonna go, there's two, there's one. I think I know what's going on. That's not all the way up. <clears throat> okay, so I gotta go one more out, I guess. There's one more out, let's see if that's enough. Okay, look from that, go from behind here. You'll see what I'm talking about. Looks pretty dang good, we gotta, we got it as close as we're gonna get, I think. Whoa, that's not good. Okay, so that's good. And then this negative 45, we're not gonna have any negative 45. It's gonna be positive. Okay, this is landing flaps now. So what I'm doing is I'm just watching right here to make sure that we don't overdrive this servo. Man, that number that they gave is completely it's wrong. Really bizarre. <clears throat> so I'm looking right here. I don't want that to bottom out. Okay. That's it. So I'm gonna go to like 85. See? Now I'm gonna closely inspect the other side. <clears throat> just to make sure we're not bottoming out. I can't hear a buzz, so it should be okay. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna go beyond 85 a little bit. Still got some room for movement. I could go to 90 and still have movement. So I'll go to 90. Nope. Yeah, but I don't like that hum. So I'm gonna go to 85. Okay, so there's our takeoff setting. There's our normal flight. <clears throat> you see this? So it looks like they droop just a hair down. I can live with that. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps. I'd like less takeoff flaps. Okay, come around. So folks, this is the picky stuff that gets you good performance, okay? So 10, 45, and 85. So 45, I wanna change. 
I'm gonna go to like 30. No, let's do 25. No, let's do 30. Okay. So there's normal flight. Roll left, roll right, take off, or excuse me, elevator up, elevator down, y'all left, y'all right. Take off flaps, landing flaps, okay? I'm gonna also change my speed to three because we're only doing part of a throw, so it's going about doubly as fast as we would normally expect mm. because this time has to do with minus 100 all the way to zero and then past to plus 100. So if you're only running half the range, it's gonna be double as fast. So in fact, I'm gonna go to four, four seconds. So that looks more consistent with what we're used to seeing. Okay, the elevator correction, I tend to think it's probably about right. I just can't believe that that was so far off. Yeah, that's... Like it doesn't even make sense. Strange. Because it wasn't like right or right, it was wrong both ways. Yeah. By a lot. <clears throat> so hopefully you guys don't have that problem, but if you do, you'll understand what's going on. Okay? So now, do they talk about thrust reverse in here? I'm assuming we have thrust reverse. I don't think so, but let's check. Vario. There's our smart battery. Got all sorts of stuff going on. So now, it would really surprise me if there's not thrust reverse on this, but it's kind of acting like there isn't thrust reverse. So I'm gonna look into it and come right back. All right, so the manual doesn't say anything about thrust reverse, and since it doesn't allow us to scroll over to it, I'm gonna have to do a little more double checking on that. But if we're allowed to have it, then I will talk to you about it. Now, I know for a fact, if you wanna have it, you can probably make it happen but it's just more a matter of maybe there's a reason they don't want us to turn it on. And if they don't want us to turn it on, you can generally turn it on anyway, but you just have to get the Spectrum Smart ESC programmer, and then you can hook up to it and change the setting through that thing instead of through the um, serial controls, which would normally show up all the way over here. But we have to do forward programming still to get S3X turned on and off, and safe turn on, okay? So that's our next move. Right now we're gonna do it. So first things first, throttle cuts on. We're gonna go into forward programming. Gyro settings. ES3X settings. ES3X gain. So they've already got some preset. It doesn't know what mode we're in. Save select. You need to make an assignment. There is no assignment yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in. Sorry, we're gonna go back into system setup, disconnect RF, acknowledge. Go to channel assign. We're gonna make an assignment since aux2 is not being used for anything, we'll go ahead and select, well, well actually, I'm gonna select it just because I have it. Yeah, we can use gear, we're not using gear for sure, right? Right. So I'll use gear for D. Now you can also use flight mode like that, but I'm just using the switch because that's what I've done in the past. I'm not sure that that makes a difference. It shouldn't make a difference. We've done it for years that way. Gyro settings, yes, Trix gains. See how it's not changing? Because we have to actually tell it how it's set up. So that's gonna be done here. Save select channel, gear. Okay. So in this mode, I want AS3X. See, it's only changing between two modes. Okay. Okay. So that's gonna be safe, select on. So now safe is technically on. So that opens up flight mode one. I'm gonna turn off AS3X here. See, I just have to reverse my labeling now. So I'll show you how to do that the easiest way. So walk back out. And then go into servo setup, travel, reverse. 
gear, okay? So now I'm gonna go back into Ford Programming so you can see it. Gyro settings, AS3X settings, AS3X gains, flight mode one, It failed to connect. That happens sometimes. If it does, just go back in. Okay, I'm gonna go back to safe select so you can see. So flight mode three, AS3X is on. Flight mode two, AS3X and safe are off. So this is gonna have AS3X built in, okay? So now watch this. Now I'm gonna reboot, but I wanna show you one more trick. If you're going in and changing, so you have flaperons and crow and stuff like that, then you can go to other settings and you can go factory reset. Boom, you don't even have to hook up the programmer, okay? Hmm. Okay, so now we have to test these, we have to test these settings right now, okay? Here's the easiest way to tell if you're in safe. Move the controls, come out of safe. Lots more throw, okay? So throttle cuts on. I may have to give some throttle in order to see AS3X working. So I'm gonna do this from a safe spot, which is probably behind the plane in this case. I'm gonna put my hand on it. Throttle cuts off. Sounds good. That's, that's about 35% throttle. AS3X is obviously working, you can hear it. Throttle cut is on, okay? I have tested it now. So I can look at the controls. Aileron up, aileron down. Aileron up, aileron down. Elevator up, elevator down. Rudder left, rudder right. It's hard to see, but I can see it, okay? Camera crew, I need you to hold the camera or hand the camera to me. I'm gonna show you just the aileron because it's hard to do this, okay? Up, down, up, down, up, down, okay? Now watch the very tip of that, rudder, rudder. That's AS3X working, okay? So now we can also verify that safe is gonna work. I'm gonna turn off the AS3X and it's not working, but you're just hearing the buzz of the actual position of the digital servos. So now it's not correcting, and that's because we have it off. Now, safe is on in addition to AS3X. AS3X, AS3X, rudder, rudder, yep. Now when I flip this plane over, it's gonna try to find the quickest route to, to level. See? And we can check the elevator. Looking at the elevator, elevator's all the way up, trying to find level. And elevators all the way down, trying to find level. There's level. Okay, pretty sweet. So AS3X is also working. Now we're gonna go back to AS3X only. We're gonna lay the plane back down on the plane stand because this thing is awkward to carry and hold. And there you have it, guys. This plane is totally set up with the exception of thrust reverse I gotta look into, okay? Thrust reverse should be easy to set up. If it were easy to set up, there may be a reason we can't do it. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug the power. Why are we unplugging power? We're unplugging power because I wanna reset everything and I wanna power cycle this and just make sure that it doesn't show up on the next boot, okay? Okay. Power's currently off, now I'm gonna turn it on, on the NX10. By the way, you should be able to do this on the NX8. Um, NX10 is great. You're gonna want the channels when we start doing the more robust stuff, okay? Which would be crow and that sort of thing, okay? So you see where my hand is? I don't like being in that vulnerable spot, but we've already vetted this system, so I do trust it. Plugging it in, getting myself into a safer spot, controlling the plane, waiting for all the beeps. Everything is good, throttle cut is on and tested. Okay, cleared the timer. Scrolling all the way over, we have Vario, okay? So it looks like they have that feature disabled and I don't know why. If you decide you wanna turn it back on, you'll have to basically plug into the programming cable, 
which is the one that goes into the receiver here, okay? And once you plug into that, you should be able to reset, or excuse me, it's right here. Right here, you see it? Come over my shoulder here. See this, right here. There's your programming cable, okay? So once you set that up, then you can do thrust reverse. Now, I have to figure out why we don't have thrust reverse if there's some technical reason. But I want thrust reverse on this because if I'm gonna use it on floats, I wanna be able to back away from the shoreline. Now we probably don't need thrust reverse to fly this thing on a normal flight, but I still want it. So we're gonna dig into it. We'll find out how to do it. We'll show you how to do it if we need to. Now I'm gonna press here with my fingers and see if I can make this easier to put this canopy on or this carpet. And that did kind of help a little bit, but it's just an awkward, awkward place to drop. Now, the only thing we haven't set up, and when I say set up, I say that loosely, is we haven't marked the center of gravity, okay? Center of gravity is obviously important on these planes. And so if you get to the part of the manual, it's gonna tell you where to do the center of gravity. The center of gravity, of course, is gonna be where the plane balances on the wing from forward to backward. 95 plus or minus 12, good Lord. Oh, math. So it's gonna be 95 minus 10 would be 85, minus two would be 83 millimeters through. Um, that would be 100, 105, 107. Mm -hmm. Okay, millimeters. So that's the range. Okay, so we're gonna check that right now. So as you can see, we have plenty of range on that. Let's turn this thing on, zero it, walk it out to 83. Now I gotta say, this plane is probably gonna be pretty CG independent. 83 to 100, and you'll be able to read that to me, right? Yes. I'm gonna flip the plane upside down. I'm gonna be careful about that light. By the way, this thing is big, so if you're building it in short ceiling environment, you're gonna have to be extra careful. Yeah. Because it is huge. Huge in a great way. Okay, so now looking at the bottom, we have 83 marked out, we're going to. So from the leading edge of the wing, I wanna find a spot that's got some ribs or something, and it looks like it does pretty much all over. So now I can take and make a little dent, very small dent. Why a dent and not just a mark? A dent can be felt with your finger and a mark cannot be. Mm -hmm. You can change the mark to be CA or hot glue or some such thing and that would do a similar function. Okay, 83.7. I accidentally bumped it so it's 83.7 good enough for me. This is gonna be and I say this sort of facetiously, somewhat largely ignored, because the truth is once we get this thing batteried out, mm -hmm. we figure out how it's set, then we're gonna mark the battery tray. Yep. Okay, so okay. now I'm gonna go up to 107. Yep. Okay, which is 95 plus or minus 12. And I like literally make a little bump I pierce the wing, and I pierce the wing. And that's all I do. I mean, you don't have to do it this way, but this is the way I've done it for years and I've had great luck. That doesn't mean that I always get everything right and there's not 400 other ways to do this, but I'm gonna be honest with you. We have had good success with it and if you choose to do it a different way, that's fine. Everybody can do their plane how they want it. <clears throat> In my case, that's the way I want it. You also notice it's a huge range. Yeah. Okay. Throttle cuts on, it's been tested. Since this is a big plane, I'll probably say that out loud a few times. I'm gonna watch my tail as I flip this over. Now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna hold this with the battery in on the back points and she's nose heavy, no big surprise, and a little bit tail heavy on the front points. And in the middle, look at that guys, literally perfect. See nice. where my middle fingers are? Mm -hmm. Right in there, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and 
say that if your battery is on the train using a 5000 6S, you should basically be good, okay? Now, what have we learned about this build? We've learned this thing is huge, it's beautiful, it's gonna be amazing, I can't wait to fly it. We've also learned it's pretty expensive because I've talked about that a lot on this model. Why is that so important? Because everybody has a budget, everybody has an RC budget. Not everybody is gonna wanna buy this because it's so expensive. It's also really big, okay? And not everybody is gonna want the appeal of a balsa wood airplane. I understand that. This is a great offering. It's been great for years. It's sold like hotcakes for many years, okay? E-Flight made a good plane here. I'm hoping this is equally awesome. It's, I'm hoping it's kind of a lot better actually. But the thing is, this is a great plane, so it's hard to beat great. I don't want it to just be bigger. I want it to be bigger and better. And maybe that's unfair of me. But the thing is, guys, if you want a great experience, there's nothing wrong with the 1.5 meter. That's a big plane still. But having balsa wood aircraft is going to give you something that will have lasting appeal. It's going to hold up better. It's not going to get as much rash, hanger rash, okay? Also, if you decide you're going to put some sort of a gas engine in there, I'm not sure exactly how they what their take is on using gas engines, but this thing is obviously big enough that if you're gonna go to a gas engine setup, this would be definitely better than a 1.5 meter foamy. But I also gotta say, this thing has a versatile battery range being that 5,000 through 7,000. That thing runs on a 3,200 and <clears throat> if I remember right, this has the added benefit of loading from the top, which is quite easy, 3,200 4S. This is a 4S plane. That's a four through six S plane. If you're gonna fly this thing on 4S, you're gonna have more scale-like performance. My experience is when I have planes that have two different battery sizes, I almost always immediately defer to the bigger size. Mm -hmm. And that's the way most of you guys are gonna be too. But you can literally probably fly this plane on the same battery that that thing flies on, that's if you wanted to, or two of them because that'd be 3,200 times two, it'd be 6,400 in parallel. But then you'd be 8S. Oh, in parallel. In parallel, it would be 4S, 6,400. You should be able to fit that in here. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, no problem, you'd be able to fit it in there, okay? So at the end of the day, is this gonna be for everybody? I mean, only people that love airplanes. So, is it gonna be for everybody that loves timbers? I mean, obviously, if you love timbers, you're gonna love this plane. There's advantages to the smaller plane, and we aren't tone deaf enough to realize that that's not true. So we just want you guys to understand that when you see this amazing product flying, it's just something to seek after that you may want, and maybe it's not that thing you're gonna get. I'm gonna tell you, for most people, the Carbon Z T28, is probably gonna be even more practical. But does that mean I love this any less? Oh no, not at all. This thing's huge and it's awesome. And by the way, it's supposed to be two meter, but how big is it actually? I don't know. The wingspan is 80 inches, 2032. Well, but you can't call it a 2.03 meter. That's kind of weird. No, I understand, but there's, is that really? I felt like it was like inches I taller know, it than was. Me. Have I shrunk? Maybe we're at 15% too, by the way. So guys, at the end of the day, we really appreciate you being here with us. We want the best for your hobby experience. And so we're gonna try really hard to give you all the setup help that we can give you. Again, apologize for the voice. That's hopefully pretty temporal and things will be back normal. If you would very much help us out when you decide to buy this amazing creature, maybe that, just look no further than the links in the video description below. And when you buy the planes through those links, we earn small commissions from the different manufacturers that we do work with. But that doesn't stop us from telling the full truth. Nothing but the truth, so help us God, because that's what we do on Brian Phillips RC. We're all about the audience and the best possible experience you can get. We don't want you guys to buy this if it's not good. We want you to buy that because we know it is good. Now, 
tomorrow morning, if all goes to plan and we fly this thing and it's awesome as I think it's gonna be, then we're gonna want you to buy this too. But the truth is, you will have already seen that video because the Unbox Build Radio setup follows the flight, okay? So if you're watching the flight, you're watching the Unbox Build Radio setup to get help when you build your own, we really appreciate the pat on the back if you buy from the links, okay? Secondly, if you wanna help us financially in other ways, even though that's the best way, we have Patreon, PayPal, YouTube Super Thanks, and YouTube members, and we appreciate all of you in any direction you wanna go helping us out. Smash a like button. Obviously, that's easy, it costs nothing. And then click the bell when you're subscribing so you get notified so that you can watch the videos when that stuff gets pumped out when we do an initial release, okay? The algorithm is different than it used to be on YouTube, and it hurts a lot of creators that do long format, okay? So if you like long format, you have to watch it. Otherwise, you're just gonna get shorts and you're just gonna get women shaking it for you, and that's just the way it's gonna be, okay? But if you like long format where there's actually something creative and helpful and technical, then you gotta watch long format and you gotta help us out when you get those recommendations for Brian Phillips RC. When you watch them, that helps us, okay? So we appreciate you guys doing that. Obviously, the links are in the video description for the plane. We'll link to the battery and we'll link to the transmitter. Um, when you follow the link to this, it'll be like search results, so you'll see this. Mm -hmm. You'll also see the UMX timber and you'll see the twin timber and things like that because obviously those are all gonna show up in the same search results. Mm -hmm. So because they look similar, make sure you're checking for the size. This is gonna be the Turbo Timber SWS 2.0 as opposed to the Turbo Timber Evo or Evolution 1.5 yep. versus the Timber Twin Timber, which I believe is a one point, what is that, 1.7, 1 1.8? 1 yeah. I'm sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's blue. I mean, and then I the UMX, which of course is ultra micro and it's small, mm -hmm. okay? But they look the same if the pictures. to the untrained yep. eye. So like if you're buying one for your husband and you're not in RC, make sure you get the right one, okay? So do a little investigation. The price should help you figure that out. Yep. And you'll so, see the ARF version as well, too, yes. if that's what you're But remember, do. ARF is hardly almost ready to fly compared to this. This took a little bit more doing than that to put together, but it wasn't that bad. Mm -mm. And to be honest with you, I am super excited for this plane, and I hope you guys are too. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting us over the years. We've been doing this for almost a decade, and we are excited to bring you so much more content. We're not ready to quit just quite yet. We have some big projects and we have some big stuff coming and it's not all airplanes and alleys. Because like I said, we got the pond coming and we have full scale stuff coming. We have a helipad coming. We have another runway coming. I mean, there's a lot of stuff around the pike. We got a huge building, which is gonna be a hangar hopefully. If all goes to plan, you guys will be right alongside us watching it all happen. And we couldn't do it without help from viewers just like you. Okay, so we appreciate you. And it's all about the audience here on Brown Phillips RC because we want you guys to get the best stuff that you can get for your hard-earned RC budget. So if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you don't have questions, throw us a high five in the form of a thumbs up when you're ready to leave. And then don't forget to stay tuned because there is so much more coming from Brian Phillips RC. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you on the next go around. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. I promised you showing how to set up the thrust reverse. And we found every conceivable way not to do it. And we started our video and then I found a mistake I made. Wow, I know it's hard to believe. So I think I figured it out. That being said, we're gonna start from scratch on the setup. So get your plane in, get yourself ready to do this. Take your prop off if you even have a remote question of safety. I have mine on a stand so it can't get away from me easily, but it could. So we're gonna demonstrate that we're safe first. Throttle cuts on, throttle sticks down. We have tools we'll talk about. I have loosened to release my ESC from the side here. That's intentional because we have to get to a plug, which we'll show you here in a minute, okay? I just don't wanna lose my Velcro. This little Velcro is kind of in a weird spot, so I do not wanna to have to re-find that, okay? So, let's plug it in. Once we plug in the plane, we give it a second to dance once, dance twice. Once it's done dancing twice, Dance once, dance twice, that's safe. Okay, everything's moving, throttle cut is currently on.
testing the throttle. It did not move. That's good. Throttle cuts off. Look at back there by the bananas. Throttle cuts on. So everything is tested. The plane is working. That's good. Everybody knows it works. Now, we also don't have thrust reverse. Just to demonstrate real quick, when and if we get to the point, I'm gonna go over here. I'm just gonna check my gear switch. It's been disassociated from A. It's not associated to switch G, but that's where I would normally start. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. System setup, disconnect RF, channel select or channel assign. And it looks like this is set to switch D because we use D to change our modes, right? Mm -hmm. So not that there's anything magical about that, but on this particular ESC, you can use channels five through nine. So I'll just jump up to, normally I would use channel seven, but it looks like it's inhibited because I don't want that attached to switch B. So I'm gonna change this to switch G. Okay, now let's walk over real quick. Okay, so switch G. Okay, now let's do flaps, make sure we don't have any interaction there. We don't. Vario on and off, we don't. And then D modes. Okay, so we should be good to go. Throttle cuts on. G is now going to command and control our thrust reverse when we get it set in the ESC. But right now the ESC doesn't know what to do and doesn't care what to do. Although technically that would be the first channel. So I'm kind of curious to see what's gonna happen. So. Right now, we already have channel seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Functioning, so let's go ahead and check and see if it works. Camera crew's gonna go back here, throttle cuts off. Throttle, just for grins. No change of state. You guys see channel seven changing? Throttle cuts on. So. We're good to go, we know it's not on. We also know it's not braking because if it were braking, that, that would not spin free, it would not free wheel, okay? So, my throttle cuts on, everything is set. The plane is working, and I don't even care if it's on. I'm gonna see what happens when we try to plug in to this port right here. Now, don't be surprised, don't be tricked by these two. They are evidently not the correct pins or the correct plugs, okay? What you have to do instead is you have to plug into this port here with the signal being toward the bottom. And it says P plus and minus. So P plus and minus. And I don't know why P is the nomenclature they use, but that's what they use. So I'm gonna plug this in with my little male to male adapter or female to female technically. And then as you can see, it comes alive, okay? So I'm gonna hit select, connecting, please wait. Oh yeah, so it's working. ESC software. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk over here. I'm gonna bring my transmitter with me just to be on the safe side. We have a computer's our backup plan if this doesn't do it, but this should do it. Pushing this back and out of the way. You guys see how I'm like careful with my elbow? Cause I don't wanna take the prop off. I don't wanna get my arm cut either. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that. Select, brake disabled, normal, proportional, disabled, normal, proportional. See, there's no braking, guys, okay? So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, select through and just show you, brake force, cut off, lipo cells, all this crap, doesn't really matter because if you don't have it, okay, so we don't have it. When you don't have it, you don't have it. So what do you do next? If you don't have it, you disconnect, de-energize your system, and then I'm gonna show you the process. So you get your computer, you gotta have Windows 7 or greater, or worse, rather, whichever way you wanna look at that. And you get this software here. We'll go ahead and open it so you can see what it looks like. Yes, allow changes, blah, blah, blah. Put this up here. I have a little USB hub so that I can use the mouse because this thing only has one USB port. So then we're gonna plug in. This is a USB A to USB C, and we're gonna update the firmware on that 100 amp ESC. And I know this is about the time you're thinking, you just got this plane like two days ago and you're in the middle of a blizzard. Uh, blizzard number two, show them the windows. Yes. <clears throat> it's ridiculous. We have gotten almost 20 inches of snow in the last four days. We're supposed to get nine more tonight. And it's nine below regular temperature right now. 
Okay, so for those of you that live in warm climates, there's also a wind chill. Okay, so this is plugged in. We don't care about connecting to the PC. Now I'm gonna just plug back into the cable we were just plugged into with the signal going there. So now I'm gonna lay this down. Now, take note, plane is still working. You can disconnect your servo cable that goes. Look, it just all populated everything. Pretty sweet. Okay, I want this thing where I can control it. I want the camera crew in a safe spot because I don't want anybody to get hurt here. Okay, so look, look at this. Brake type, there's the choices. Dur, dur, dur. There's no more. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to update the firmware. Oh, 4.07, boom. Hmm, it seems like there should be more. Let's try to upgrade. Now this might make me log in or some stupid thing. If it does, we'll pause because the login process is a personal thing and I don't want you guys to necessarily have all my login stuff because while we do work with Horizon on these things, <laughs> we don't want you guys to use our account for everything. Okay, so this is gonna take a second. And what's happening is it's trying to figure out, I think, what the latest and greatest is. It's gonna take a second, and then it's gonna allow you to operate. But you can see, boom, 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 boom. You've got flashing status here. So that's gonna give you um, basically reference to what's going on right there. And this is what it's gonna look like. And then up here, you can see there's nothing really that major going on. It just says connecting PC. And then it goes down through this dually, through that thingy. And then over here, it goes through Rami RC. Right there. So that's what you get, guys. Pretty simple stuff. Now, this is hopefully gonna bring us from 4.07, 4.0.7, to 4.0.8. Two seven, I think, is the change, yeah. right? So it'll go from 07 at the end to 27 at the end. So that's that's like a lot of steps, guys, evidently. That's like four or five years worth of upgrades. I'm just kidding, it's not that bad. So once this is done, the one thing I want to warn you about is that everything should go back to default. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna be a smart feller instead of a fart smeller. And what that means is when it reboots, if it does, I'll have a hand on it just to make sure. Obviously, the easiest way to keep yourself safe is to take this off, but it's really hard to demonstrate what's happening when the prop is off, and I want you guys to see what's happening. And so you just have to trust me, I am not a professional. Nope. Right? Is it done? No. Okay. Almost. So we want you guys to see what happens. Otherwise, you know, it'd be nice to just pause and, you know, clip this out, but I want you to see what happens. That's getting close. Come on now. Don't do the Windows thing where you start a whole nother... Okay, look, 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 look. It says. We're watching for safety and now read. Upgrade, operate, finish successfully. Watch for dances. Watch for dances, don't click anything. You haven't heard any dances. You guys hear that? None. Because we never actually shut off, okay? Okay. So I have to make sure my throttle cut's working because I don't trust this yet. Throttle cut is working so far. There's my throttle. It is now reverse thrust, which is not the way it's supposed to be. Throttle cuts on. So now I have only reverse thrust. <laughs> so we have to set this up. Although, although, curiously enough, throttle cuts off. Watch this. Move my G switch. Nothing. Throttle cuts on. But that is most definitely reverse thrusting. That means that the counterclockwise, clockwise direction is swapped. Doesn't matter, we can switch it with wires or we can switch it with setup. We'll switch it with setup. Throttle cuts on, we are now safe. I can trust this, okay? But we are still connected. Now that it's connected and it's upgraded, check this out. What are you doing? Don't do it again, you dummy. So now it's updating all this crap. Fixed wing, yes, brake type, Booyah! Brake force, they say to put it to seven. Ugh, I'm not doing that, I'll do two. <clears throat> Surge, whatever, don't care. Whoa, auto calculation, sure. Cut off voltage, do we really wanna cut off the voltage? Mm, not really. Profile one, that's not all of them. So now let's, where's the reverse? We already we have reverse, it. nah, that's not all there is. Throttle control. BC voltage. Crap, I didn't pay attention to what that was. It was six. 
So can you do the change the motor rotation there? Yes. Sweet. That's your standard. That's what I was looking for. And then thrust reverse is on channel seven. You can change that, okay? And then we have to turn on braking somewhere. Active free will. You already did that. No, it's just. Okay. Okay, so we should be good. So I can go back to general settings. Fixed wing, reverse, brake force two. Feels like there's one other place where we have to have it. I'm gonna apply. It's gonna write the changes. I'm gonna hit okay. Now, since we've updated the firmware, I'm just gonna demonstrate here. I'm gonna just disconnect this. Whew. Now it's disconnected, okay? This is still technically live. Throttle cuts on. We wanna trust it. Throttle stick is moved and it's not changing. Throttle cuts off. Nothing, okay? Throttle cuts off and it's not running, okay? You wanna know why? Because we probably have to reboot now. Okay, I don't trust this thing as far as I can throw it right now. So I'm gonna disconnect the programming tool. I'm gonna power cycle. Okay, let it power and de-energize. Power back up. Remember, all we're doing is just going through the normal startup procedure. I don't ever trust anything until I see it work. One dance, two dances, flaps working, rudder's working. Okay, so far, throttle cuts off. Throttle, and it's going, it's blowing. See, show the people the paper towels. Okay, so that's definitely working. Throttle cut is now on and tested, okay? I can now trust this thing again. Throttle cuts off. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and switch my G position. Still forward. There's reverse. <laughs> Show them the planes. See the that, that glider's moving. Did you see it? Barely. Okay. Yeah. I can hear it. Throttle cuts on. I know, it's a lot louder. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we just got to set up our normal radio setup. But I wanted to point something out. When you use thrust reverse on an Avian ESC, there can be some strangeties to it, okay? So I want you to notice this. There's three conditions here that can be true of this switch. I don't want to float in the middle because minus 100 is technically supposed to be the normal, normal forward thrust. We have found that to be true but it's not always true, okay? So let's get our Avian ESC back in here just so we can show you. Um, I wanna unplug power. We're gonna button this back up. I wanna show you the whole process, so come over here. Okay. You guys come to Brian Phillips RC because I don't leave you high and dry halfway through a setup, at least as best we can control. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> okay, so I'm gonna slide this down. I'm gonna throw it in there. Then I'm gonna take this ESC. I'm gonna just get these Velcro straps back in a better position. Then I'm gonna resituate it so that it goes down just a little bit. You see how it dropped down that leg? That's the way I want it. Then I can reposition everything a lot easier. I had thought about shelf liner, but then I'm like, yeah, this ESC is probably gonna get hot. I mean, not right now, it's not gonna get hot. No. Okay, so that's down there. See, it's got dropped down just a teeny bit so it can't move out of that position, at least not easily. Okay, now we should be good to go and we can unplug this cable or we could leave it. I am going to choose to unplug it. But at this point, there's no reason we can't plug in and use the regular firmware programmer that I didn't drop on the ground. Okay? Right, okay. <clears throat> if you don't want to energize your ESC, but you want to set up your programming, I'm going to show you how right now. Plug in your battery, okay? Let this energize, and you can go into servo test like this. Now you will need another one of these male-to-male -male cables or female-to-female, -female, whichever way you wanna look at it. I'm not a biologist. I'm gonna just lay this right here, and then guess what? Then you can plug this in, and you can energize this device right like that. Boom, just like that, okay? Then all you have to do is get yourself another cable to go between here and that plug that's kind of back here, 
that we were just plugged into a minute ago, and blammo lammo, you're ready to rock and roll. You can make your changes. In fact, pause and we'll come right back. So it wouldn't be a Brian Phillips RC video if I didn't forget something, and I did. But now that I've got two of these cables, um, yes, I did have to build the end on this, my apologies. It's plugged into the ESC. This is for those of you that did get the correct firmware, but the thrust reverse is not turned on, then you'll just energize this from something. You can actually plug it in here as well, which will power it. But if you don't want to energize the plane, you can do this. Whoops, I did that backward. This is just going to energize the plane on the battery plug. And then this is going to allow you to hook up. See, it's freaking out because it's trying to energize the plane. Do you guys see what happened there? Oh. So just be aware. <laughs> Transmitter's all pissed off now. Okay, so if you decide to do that, turn this off. It's really mad at it's me really right annoyed. now. <laughs> it's really annoying. That was really, <laughs> like, that was really dumb. That was really obnoxious. Okay, so obviously we know we, we don't want to do it that way, which means we didn't need the cable I just built. <laughs> So all you would need to do is plug in your ESC. Okay, so energize the plane. I'm just gonna do it as the safest way I can come up with, which is keep control of the plane at all times. So turn your transmitter back on after you <laughs> stop all the weird beeping. You watch Brian Phillips RC to learn how to do things and also how not to yeah, do things. Right. Maybe more it's that. very important. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm just gonna, we've already plugged this wire in, so I'll just put that out of the way. Uh, plug it in like usual, make sure you don't cut yourself. Make sure the thing is trustworthy. Okay, watch it for the dances. Everything seems fine. Once this comes up, we don't really care about forward thrust or reverse thrust yet. Throttle cut is on. We just make sure it doesn't spin. Throttle cut's off. Doesn't really matter which way it's going, throttle cut's on, okay? We can test it. We know it's working. Now at this point, I'm going to plug in power here. So minus is down. Okay, so we have power. And we're gonna plug in this, which goes like this. Can you point the camera over so you can see the end? See that, okay? So I'm plug this in, okay? Then what we should be able to do is we should be able to hit select and it's gonna work, okay? So keep yourself out of the prop just mm -hmm. in case something crazy goes. Okay, so as you can see, select, fixed wing, reverse. Brake type reverse, and all you'd have to do is hit edit and it'll just change the choices. Brake force two, that's what I set. Now watch, brake force two. It's not freewheeling, okay? Surge, auto calculated for cells. BC voltage, startup time soft. Timing 15, counterclockwise, which is evidently working because it's spinning the right way now. And then, don't know what that is, don't care. Don't care, don't care, thrust reverse channel seven. Okay, and we don't wanna do that, so now we're back. So just unplug it, disconnect power, okay? So. so now at this point, if you already had the updated firmware, all you'd have to do is turn on braking from normal to proportional to reverse. Right, okay. but if you get one, if you order one today, and, <clears> and it still has this firmware, issue, then you have, have to hook to up to the computer, the computer thing. Okay. which is a pain, Just admittedly. Sure so now we'll unplug this. So now we've covered both of our bases, which are people that had the firmware updated and people that didn't have the firmware updated. The AD and ESCs will let you do it, but we're gonna pause, get the avian restrapped, and we'll come right back. All right, so now that the avian's back in place, throttle cuts on, sticks down, cleared my timer, plug it in the battery, just like we're going out to the flight field. The only thing we gotta set up, make sure we trust everything, make sure everything is set. Okay, so that's all set. I know it's not started, it didn't spin, it didn't do anything weird, there's no buzzing, there's no humming. So we should be good to go, we've got the canopy on. So now at this point, we can close the computer, because I don't wanna blow the computer somewhere across the house. So for those of you that didn't need to use the computer, you're the lucky ones, because we did, and that's a pain, but it's avoidable for anybody that has the firmware updated. So if you don't have a PC, then borrow a PC or whatever. Okay, so everything's working. Take off flaps, landing flaps. All the stuff is as we expected it to be. Throttle cuts off, forward thrust. 
You can see the paper towels moving. Now, when I go over here on the monitor, you can see auxiliary two, that's channel seven, is now all the way toward me. When I go that way, it should go the other way, okay? Holding the plane, I have to be careful to get something because it's gonna go backward now. Look that way. The TV's moving. Go over there and film the side of the TV. I want them to see the TV moving. Oh. You might probably have to go to the hallway, I bet. Go to the hallway so they can see the side of it. So guys, this is our house. That's TV. Okay, <laughs> watch this. Okay, now, <laughs> throttle cat. cuts on and tested, okay? Our cats love when you do this. Our cats love it. So, that means that the switches are in opposite conditions from what I want, okay? So right here, this would be my normal flight mode when it's back like that. So what I need to do is I need to do a digital switch setup, which I'm gonna do right here, right now. I'm gonna do it so that I know I'm not gonna get hit with that. So I'm gonna click, scroll down to digital switch setup, select switch G. Okay, now remember, this doesn't control the amplitude of throttle, it only controls whether it's in reverse or forward. So I need to make this condition the opposite of what it is. Now you could also just do servo setup, travel, and you could reverse, but that leaves you in a point of vulnerability, and that is the middle step. I don't want ambiguity because we need safety attached to this condition, okay? Switch G. In this, I want it all the way to minus 100. I don't want minus 80. I don't want minus 90. I want minus 100. I want it latched all the way to the absolute top of the expected range. Then on this position, I want it to be plus 100, which should be forward, or excuse me, reverse thrust. And then I want this one all the way the other way at plus 100. And I'm gonna show you exactly the way the conditions look. Now again, this is a personal preference issue, but that middle step needs to be tied high or tied low. And no, we don't do pilot fatigue on these. Okay, now I'm gonna just show you in this menu, I'm gonna bounce out of it. Okay, so you see I'm not highlighting anything, so it should still work. Now, camera crew's gonna move back over here. Throttle cut's still on, tested, good. Throttle cut's off. We should have forward thrust as the stick is forward now. That's the way I want it by default. Forward thrust, you see it's nice and quiet. We're at about, uh, I don't know, 15 to 30% throttle. It's trying to pull forward on the stand. I'm gonna back it off just a little bit. Reverse thrust. Forward thrust, reverse and reverse, okay? Forward thrust, throttle cut. Everything is tested. This plane's ready for some action. Now, just to give you an idea, because it's kind of hard to tell on camera, how windy that thing is. We gotta find something because the TV moving was not a good idea. Do you mind if I blow your napkins? Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna just take the napkins. I'm gonna just set them here, okay? It's probably gonna make a huge mess. It's, it's gonna, gonna be super exciting video footage. Knock the whole thing over. You wanna knock the whole thing? Here, no, I'll go right here. Just to, right there, it's okay. gonna knock those things out. Yeah. Okay, throttle cuts off, thrust reverse is on. Remember, it's all based on the stick condition. Okay, here we go. <laughs> knocked the cat out. Knocked the cat out. Did it out work? No. Oh, dang it. It did move him. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Okay. Here's the thrust reverse. <laughs> you can't see, but the camera crew's shirt's blowing everywhere. It's hilarious. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to forward thrust. Throttle cuts off. And as you can see, we have plenty of power. But I don't particularly like being right next to the prop when it's that powerful. So, guys, what have we learned? We learned A. I hate it when settings like this aren't from the factory. It's a pain in the butt. But B, but, but B, I'm glad that we know how to do it. Right, because and that we can. Because what you didn't see was the first 25 minutes of us doing it wrong. <laughs> you just saw us doing it right and it still took forever, okay? So throttle cuts on, planes tested. This turbo timber is awesome. You want it, SWS, which stands for Sport Wood Series. Series, meaning there is at least two of them so far you know about. The Ultra Stick 1.1 meter, mm -hmm. okay? And this is going to be the second in a series, which means there's more coming. So if you're excited, which I am, I don't blame you because this plane is gonna be awesome. 
Now, we haven't even flown it with the thrust reverse, and it's killing us because we have this, like, blizzard happening out here. Yep. And uh, as you can see, we have, like, snow stuck to windows. It's very bad out. Can we turn on the security lights and see what happens? Nah, they probably can't probably see not. very good. It doesn't look like much of anything. Well, let's just say it was a nail biter getting home from work yesterday. Yeah. The 35 mile journey took me like an hour. So not as bad as I've had. Believe me, it's been a lot worse before, but it was pretty terrible. And our high temp of negative 12 tomorrow will be super fun. So we that's filmed, we filmed in minus 14. Temperate. Yeah, we have. We have. But that's not the wood chill. And also that wasn't a wood plane. And the weight, was it? No. No. I can't remember what that was. I can't remember what not. it was, but it sucked. But I think our wind tomorrow is like upper teens gusting to upper 20s. So this is part of the Unbox Build Radio setup. Or you're watching it as a standalone video about avian ESCs. ESCs. If you're watching it as a standalone video, you might under, understand what you need to know now. But just keep in mind, there's so much more to setting up these planes. It's not a necessarily hard process. And once you've done four or five or six of them, you can pretty much figure out most of it. But it is kind of an ever evolving process. And we're gonna help you get the most out of these amazing planes, whether it's this plane or its foam counterpart or its big brother or its, its very, very small brother, the Ultra Micro Extreme, the UMX Turbo Timber. We're gonna help you with all of them right here on Brian Phillips RC. Now, if you wanna help support us, the way you can do it is obviously buy things from our links. You're gonna be paying the same price through the exact same vendors. Um, obviously, the XBC battery checker featured here. We use that all the time. Didn't happen to be really helpful in this case, but it's still nice to know it exists. And then this is the Spectrum Smart ESC Programmer V2, which is also a battery checker, as is the Smart. But you see, this is a servo tester. I feel like this is a more important tool to have, and it's really economical. This one's a less important tool to have, unless you need it guys. But we'll link to both of them since we showed them in the video, okay? Mm -hmm. And then obviously we just use whatever random smart pack we had sitting around. We probably won't link to that today. Um, and then these cables we were using are just like your standard, like uh, some people call this male, it's actually female pins. So that's, that designates that they're female to female cables. Okay, in our case, we just needed the one to plug into the ESC and it might be nice to have one of those. You can also use a Y cable and uh, just leave that accessible. Some of these Avian ESCs have cooling fans on them. Some of them plug into that very port to steal power, okay? So just understand how that works. There is a factory programming cable that's opposite that, that doesn't work, and that's what we did for the first 25 minutes of our video that we eliminated because it was a complete waste of time because neither of them worked. So if you're doing it that way and it just says contacting PC or connecting or whatever, ESC. ESC, and it never, 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 never goes. It never says. If it doesn't say, please wait. Under it's that, not doing it's it. It's not going. It's not doing it, yeah. and it won't go. It won't. Okay? Yeah. It's just going to sit there and make you think you're getting somewhere, and it's then you'll even hook it up to your computer, anything. and you will see it propagate menu structure and then immediately disappear, disappear. as fast as it came up. Yeah. So if you see that, then you're ready to rock and roll. So that's the digital switch setup, very simple. We basically have a normal switch mode. So basically when you're over here, ha ha, 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 ha. There we, it is. So once we update the, the firmware, you can do it from the screen, okay? So remember, but you have to do it within so many seconds of power cycle if you wanna do it that way. So, but here's the catch. And guys, let's just be totally clear. You have to update the freaking firmware on the ESC to get that menu structure available. But did you need that thing? Yes. That's what I was saying. You have to update the firmware, okay. which means then you have to be hooked to the computer. Okay, so there's no way so around. So for that. those of you that already have the firmware updated, you will see this menu when you scroll all the way to the right, yep. instead of the Vario, like we did, okay? So factory, if you're listening, <laughs> I know you'll hear from us because we are gonna report this directly to the factory through our factory contacts. But the truth is that ESC needs to be updated before it's put out into production and ours wasn't. Now that doesn't mean that yours isn't gonna be. And so if it isn't, you may not need this section of video at the very end of our Unbox Build Radio setup, but we do take pride in showing all these details, even though we make long videos. If you guys like the long content, the way you can help support us, like I was saying, you can buy these things from the links in the video description below. But really, 
if you just insist on not buying something because your wife has threatened your life again, all you have to do, <laughs> all you have to do is click the links down below. You can support us on Patreon and become a monthly supporter. That does give you some access to me for comments that are a little bit more reliable in terms of speed. And you guys know if you're one of the regulars, um, but we don't list it on Patreon because if we did, we'd have to charge that for anybody overseas, which is ridiculous. And we're not gonna charge a value added tax. It's so stupid. There's also YouTube membership. And that's another way you can support us monthly or you can do YouTube super thanks if you want to throw a few bucks and then PayPal if you just want to cut all the middlemen out. Uh, in terms of expense ratio, Patreon is fairly expensive. I think it usually goes about 18, 19% of the money goes to them, which is pretty terrible. YouTube membership is the most expensive. It's like 30%. Then PayPal, if you do friends and family, it's free. Nobody pays anything, so it's the best way. But if you're overseas, sometimes there's some currency exchange fees. Mm -hmm. And then uh, YouTube Super Thanks, they keep their 30% cut too. So if nobody ever told you that, that's the way it works. So if you guys are all about efficiency, and we are about efficiency, I'm huge cheapskate, you may have noticed, because I built the end on my cable instead of buying one. I have hundreds of cables. I just want to make what I need work, work. And I'm big about having tools so I can do things myself whenever possible, which doesn't always show through on my videos because we're trying to make a video teaching you how to do it out of the box. But that is true of my life. Okay, so those four ways, you can figure out what makes best sense to you. But really, and I say this all the time, people think I'm blowing smoke, I'm not. I would rather you guys buy this plane and then make them pay a commission to us because then you don't do it. And it helps to propagate the relationships that we have with the affiliate companies, whether it's that or the beautiful T28, which by the way is amazing and I love it. It's one of my favorite planes, although this thing is gonna be on the short list of favorite planes because big planes that do what they say and do them well, oh yeah, it's pretty good stuff. Also, this thing is float. Floats can be put on here. And I gotta say, we are going to do tires. You just wait. They will be good, they will be an improvement, <clears throat> but you have to wait a little longer for that. But at the end of the day, the ecosystem of RC depends on manufacturers that make good stuff for us to bring them to you so you can buy them, okay? And that closes the loop, okay? If, the, if we weren't bringing people to buy things, they wouldn't care. We would be of no value to them, okay? So I'm not faulting them for that, but just remember, if we bring you value, the way you help support us in our little family is to basically buy the planes from the link so they know that we helped you guide to help to guide you through the process or helped you to guide you to this plane versus you know some other competitive offering okay and that's not to say that we didn't also do the competitive offering we probably did so just check it out on brianphillipsrc.com if you can't find it all you have to do is type brian b-r-i-n phillips p-h-i-l-l-i-p-s rc.com into your own box control enter Boom, ready to go, that's where you are. Or we link to it in our video description below. YouTube has backed off of their attacks on our links, thank God, because it was a real battle and we had some people in Australia that mm -hmm. were helping us, what's his name, Eric? Oops. Gosh, I'm drawing a blank, I feel terrible. No, I know. Well anyway, he helped us, so thank you. You know who you are. And also, we are super happy that they have backed off of that. They reinstated most of our links and then just like five hours after they did that, they blocked another link, but whatever. They did fix it after that. So if you're looking in the links in the video description below and you can't find the thing you're looking for and it's just like the ambiguous blank there, it's because YouTube thinks you're so stupid that you can't figure out that you're helping to support us by following a link that is an affiliate link, even though we literally list it on the description. So we aren't trying to trick anybody. The way this works is they pay small commissions to us when you guys buy stuff through the links. Yep. That's how we make this happen. And if you're looking at a current video like this one, that description box is shorter. I know yes. a lot of you used to really appreciate the whole long list. Long list. But we but that they didn't. could be part could have they been didn't part like of the problem. It. So because we, if you clicked on a link that said P51 and it brought you to P51s, they thought that was that spam. was really confusing. That for was them. super dangerous. Yes, that's the nomenclature they use. Dangerous. So if you're on this video and you are watching this and you're like. I don't want the turbo timber because of whatever. Or I don't but want, I want. Or I don't want this, but I want the 1.5. That but click see, on this and it will show that. Right. But if you're like, but I want the T28. If you just go down and click on the list that says Horizon Hobby, it'll be right there. Search for Boom. the T28. It's yep. still we still we try to make it yep. as easy as possible for you because we know what I would do if I was looking at a video. But like I said, if you can't find the one you want, all you have to do is go to BrianPhillipsRC.com. We have mm -hmm. links right at the top of the list. 
and you can search by type or affiliate. Okay, so whether it's eFlight or Horizon Hobby or Spectrum or Smart Technology or Smart ESCs or something like that, you can search that way, but we also have it searched by type. So this, of course, would show up in general aviation, stole aircraft, mm -hmm. you know, like I don't, do we have any other ways of branding? See, like we don't have a balsa category yet, but yeah, if we, we did, probably like have if that. that showed up, there'd so be there a were, this, And that would help you to figure out which plane you really want to put your hard-earned money into. Because at the end of the day, this is an expensive plane. It's probably one of the most expensive ones that we've reviewed, but that doesn't mean that there's not more expensive planes. Oh, there's a lot more oh, expensive. yes. So mm -hmm. there's people that spend this much on one component of an expensive plane. Yeah. And I'm not exaggerating. And you guys, if you don't know that yet, that's where I'm trying to open your eyes to how broad and wide and deep and amazing this hobby can really be. And I'm not just saying because you can buy expensive crap. There's tons of hobbies where you can blow money like crazy. And to be honest with you, this isn't quite as expensive as illicit drugs and uh, other terrible things that you can do. Not quite. But, I mean... but it is expensive if you want it to be. You can also run RC on a budget. You don't have to always use the latest and greatest, but I'm gonna tell you this. When we give recommendations, we give recommendations with respect to the fact that we don't have unlimited resources, we know you don't either. So when we say, hey, the NX10, it's not the cheapest, but certainly not the most expensive, okay? That being said, we know that you guys have limited budgets, most of you, because you're like us. You go out, you work for a living, you get a paycheck, most of it goes to your wife, then some of it is left for the IRS, and then the rest of it goes to your kids, and then sometimes there's a few hundred bucks left at the end of a long month. And so you're like, what do I wanna buy? That thing, okay? So I get it, I get it, I totally get it. Especially when we were younger, we got it even more because we were living it every single day. But if you're careful with the way you do things, you can get those expensive toys later, or you can just get a bunch of debt and do it right now. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Just ask Dave Ramsey what he thinks, <laughs> and he'll guide your way. <laughs> So that being said, uh, Turbo Timber is amazing. You guys will like it. It's not for everybody. We understand that. But there's a lot to learn from this Unbox Build radio setup. And we want to be here for you as you advance through the ranks of the hobby lifestyle. And so here on Brian Phillips RC, we do our best to give you long form content that's going to give you millions of little answers to little questions. And then we're going to try to do short clips occasionally when we have to fix things like programming an avian ESC that didn't have a feature that it probably should have out of the box, but it didn't, and now we do. Because at the end of the day, I would be remiss to say I want a turbo timber, but I don't want thrust reverse. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> That's like saying, I want to go scuba diving, but I don't need any air. <laughs> so not now you've heard it. Quite well, that bad. First from Brian Phillips RC. <laughs> Oxygen, who needs that? <laughs> Uh, all right, guys, so Turbo Timbo is amazing. The SWS 2-meter uh, NX10 did everything we wanted, and we will do a revisit where we include Crow as well as some different uh, setups. It's not really that big a deal to switch it, but I got to say this thing is capable. Also, one quick side note, if you haven't already heard, we got a 15.8 prop. I think we were supposed to get a 16.6 prop, mm -hmm. okay? I am excited for the 16.6 prop. I think it's gonna slow down the plane a little bit, but it's gonna give us more poppy power, which is gonna be cool, and I'm excited to see how it, how it responds. Um, I'm not sure when that's gonna happen. We would like it to be part of our maiden flights, but I, I just don't think that's gonna happen because of mother nature yeah. and the release schedule for this particular plane, and obviously we don't want you guys waiting around on us. Not that it would matter if, if we were on fire and running down the street asking for help, the release <laughs> would happen regardless of what our condition was. <clears throat> but that being said, amazing plane, amazing product line. We love these planes from E-Flight. And now that we're starting to get some Balsa aircraft from E-Flight, I am super happy with what we've seen so far. Any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like I said, best way you can support us, buy the planes you like. If you don't like this plane, there's a million other planes and we hope you guys will find exactly what you want. And if you need help getting back to the hobby, this would be a great place to stay for a while. I promise you. If you're coming back to the hobby and you did this 20 years ago, this is going to be a great bridge for you coming back into the ultra micros and the foamies and all that stuff. This will give you a lot to work with. If you're brand new to the hobby, this is probably too much playing for you. I'm sorry. I know you want to think this is no big deal. Hey, it's, I, I'm a skilled pilot. I fly 747s full of humans, except I don't think there's a lot of people flying those anymore. But anyway, you know what I mean. There's always a better choice. <laughs> 
Okay, well, there's not always a better choice, but sometimes the best choice is not the thing you wanna to get to, it's where you need to start. And that's what we're good at here on Brian Phillips RC. We're gonna help you. We also have a list of beginner planes on Brian Phillips RC, if you're not sure this is for you. But I'm gonna tell you what, the 1.5 meter turbo timber that looks exactly like this, except about half the size, even though it's only 1.5 instead of two, is gonna be an amazing choice for you, even if you're brand new, okay? It's actually a little bit too much plane even for most beginners, but I'm gonna tell you this. If you're a beginner with safe, you could probably do it. If you're returning, you could probably do it. But if you're returning and you had lots of experience, this would be a great bridge to get you back in. And you know what it costs for an ARF, okay? This ARF is a lot cheaper, but I'm telling you, the bind and fly is a better value. So get the bind and fly. Unless you're gonna replace all the servos or something crazy like that. Then in that case, you might get the bind and fly and then you'll be good. All right, guys, that's all we got to say. Amazing plane, camera crew, am I cutting you off? Okay. No. All right, you just looked like you had something really you wanted to say. I'm just waiting for the cats to have a, a cat have fight, a cat brawl over here pretty Ooh. soon. Should we show the cat fight before we go? <laughs> no. He's just watching. No, Colby's in the pantry hiding. See her behind us. Yes, you guys see the cat in the back? That's the one that's afraid of this one. The one of this one right here. This She's one, gonna attack. This one lives in the master bedroom. This one lives everywhere else. Yep. And, and then that's he's the He's protecting her. Yep. It's gonna be, and when they it's, have a fight, it's like intense and like right claws now. Claws screeching all It doesn't the way matter if it's 4 a.m. Let's have a fight right now. <laughs> that's what I was waiting for. So no, you yeah. didn't interrupt Well, me. that would have been good. I guess we won't be able to show cat fighting because we'll probably get blocked for that. That happens all the time. It's like limited it. or no monetization. Right. We'll check, to check the check cat in the fight cat. box. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. That's all you get from Brian Phillips RC. I'm sorry my voice sucks. It's actually getting better. It and is. I know it sounds terrible, yeah. but we'll get there. All right. Leave your questions and comments down below. We'll see you on the next video. Guys, don't forget to smash the like button. Click the bell for notifications if you're subscribing so you'll know when new content comes out. And we have tons of new content in that room. We're about ready to break out one right now. So stay tuned. World's best audience right here on YouTube. I'm Brian Phillips RC. Come back for more.